Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning. Good morning, What a baby. day we've got coming. How you guys doing? Woo. It's it, finally here. Hey, it's finally here. In, in all my years, I cannot remember no. an NFL draft no. this fascinating or this debatable, which is why here we go. Yeah. You really can debate everything. I'd say. Every pick, and really, except the first one, Skip, you can debate all the rest. You can debate the first one if you like. <laughs> you really could. I thought of that, the same thing, Skip, driving in. Have I ever been more excited nope. for the draft? The day has finally come, guys. Let's break it down. Round one of the NFL draft is tonight, and we will see what the 49ers do with the third pick. They still reportedly aren't any closer to making a decision yet with the gap between Mac Jones and Trey Lance closing in recent days. So, Shannon, you got to answer me. What should and what will the 49ers do here? Well, Skip, I believe they moved up from 12 to 3 in order to take Mac Jones. But there was a a month in between, and they kind of talked themselves out of it. Skip, I've been had my own car since I was about 19. Brother bought me my first car that I owned myself since I was 19. And since then, I'm almost a couple of months short of 53. I've never test driven a car. Because I know if I get there and I test drive one and I test drive the other one, it's going to, I know what I want, I go pick it up. I said, look, I'm coming, I'm getting this car, but I'm, dri- I'm driving off the lot with it. Mm-hmm. So I don't test drive. And what, it, what the 49ers did, Skip, they test <laughs> drove another car. They ended up going to see Trey Lance. They asked uh, uh, the, uh, John Beck to put him through some drills, give him, let him get familiarize, familiarize himself with a system. And they saw him, and they're like, okay, wow. And this is what happened. I believe, you believe, that had when they made this, if they make this, this trade on draft night, Mac Jones is the selection. But you had a month. I believe they've talked themselves out of Mac Jones. I, I, honestly, after sitting here, and it's like, it's close, it's 50-50. Have you heard anything from the inside about that? I have not heard from the inside. Uh... Obviously, you being close to <laughs> close, Mike close, close to Mike. Close, very close to Mike. I have not heard anything from inside, and that's what's so intriguing. Because normally, you know, you get a sense, but the one thing we do know is that when they start, when the needle starts moving in another direction, skip it up, it normally doesn't stop. And the needle is kind of move, is moving faster towards Trey Lance than I think Mac Jones would even like. If you make me say now, nah, I don't know what the odds are. Fox bet might have moved the odds, but I'm saying there's a 55, 60% chance that Trey Lance is going to be that selection instead of Mac Jones. And I believe if you had made that, when they made the trade, what was it, three weeks ago, a month ago, I believe Mac Jones. I believe they made that trade with Mac Jones in mind because he reminds them of Matt Ryan. He reminds them of Kirk Cousins. And they know what they're getting with that style, Skip. There ain't no, I wonder what, wonder what could he be. You know exactly what you're going to get with Matt Ryan. You know exactly what you're going to get with Kirk Cousins. But in this offense, and to expand it <laughs> and to have some of that, the design runs like a Kyler Murray, design runs like a Mark Jackson, you're going to get more bang for your buck with Trey Lance. Mm-hmm. But to just to throw the ball and just run the offense in its truest sense, Mac Jones is the better fit. But to open the playbook, as, as Bucky Burke says, to expand it, I believe, I, if you want to explain the playbook, those two guys, Justin Fields and Trey Lance, will give you more bang for your buck if you want to expand the playbook. But to run the offense like he read it in Atlanta, to run the offense like he read it with Cousins, Mac Jones is a better fit. So I believe they take Trey Lance because I believe he wants to expand it. Okay, so the man I call Shannon Shanahan, (laughs) because you're so close to both the Shanahans, is now publicly saying that they are about to make the wrong pick. Isn't that what you just said? You just laid it on the table. You would take Mac Jones. They have talked themselves out of Mac Jones Mm -hmm. and into Trey Lance to their detriment. Let me tell you what I believe both of these guys believe. They believe they can take the wrong guy and okay. still be a great decision because they have so much confidence in their ability to coach him up, and they have so much confidence in that system. That's what they believe. Because, Skip, like you said, you look at it w- over the years after John Elway, the selections that they've made, you're like, Brian Greasy. But Brian Greasy threw for 4,000 yards and went to a Pro Bowl. He also went 27 and 24 yes. as Mike Shanahan's starting quarterback. Yes, yes. And then he tried Jake Plummer, and he was good in the regular season and terrible in the post. Right. And then he tried Jay Cutler, and he was a sub-500 quarterback and finally got Mike 
fired. I think, Skip, he lo- Mike loved Jake Plummer because he says, you know what? I can expand the playbook. I got a guy that got legs. I can run naked boots. I can run him on design runs, and we can get more bang for our buck. But the inconsistency, mm-hmm. the accuracy yep. was a problem. So he says, you know what? And that's why Kyle Shanahan, if, if you ask Kyle, the number one thing he's going to say is accuracy. But the question is, are you willing to sacrifice some accuracy Mm -hmm. in order to expand and get more bang for your buck with either Fields or Trey Lance? Yep. Hmm. I know what you would do. (laughs) I have been on record for about three weeks on this show. I would go Trey Lance at number three. And I was saying that before it was fashionable. Mm -hmm. And now it seems like there's a runaway train for Trey Lance at number three, which is shocking to me. And yet, I also told you from the start that if there hadn't been runaway buzz about these two guys, the Shanahan's trading up for mm-hmm. Mac Jones, I don't think anybody else would have talked about Mac Jones as a top five-ish right, pick. Right. I think he would have looked at been looked at as a mid-round pick, mid-first right. round. Mm-hmm. And now Todd McShay just came out with his latest mock, and he's got him falling down to... Uh, where was it? He's got him all the way down to going to New England at 15th. 15th. Okay. That would make sense to me. He also could go 19th to the Washington football team, which probably still is in the market for a quarterback if they don't have to pay too much to trade up. Right. So there'll be several teams lurking in the middle of the first round saying, is Mac Jones going to fall in our lap? Right. Okay. So I was on record as of yesterday. We went back and forth about Mac Jones. And what have I always said from, from the start? Tape does not lie. Correct. And you threw that back at me as watch the tape on Mac Jones because it's spectacular. It is. He does little to nothing wrong. Yet I would tell you if you looked harder at said tape, even though the results are sensational, the results are they're not quite Joe Burrow all time statistically, but they're they're close. They're close. 77% 77% completion percentage. And that 96 QBR is unheard of. It, it's unheard of. I got you. By the way, Justin Fields was 92. And in any other year, we, we'd be talking about Justin <laughs> Fields. If there weren't a Trevor Lawrence, we'd be saying Justin Fields right. sh- should be the first overall right. pick. But on Mac Jones, when I say tape doesn't lie, the Mac Jones I saw, I'm, I'm doing TV tape, so I'm right. just watching the games, right. eye testing on TV. <laughs> I didn't see special. I didn't see big arm because he's got the, the weakest of the five top Correct. arms. Right. And not that it's weak. It's just a little below average right. for the NFL. Mm-hmm. I found the release to be not that quick. But he is clearly somewhat to a whole lot a product of what was around him in skill, talent, and in protection. Mm-hmm. They were both supreme, supreme, right? Yeah. So Devontae Smith took over college football. He took over the national championship game. He won the Heisman Trophy. He could get open on anybody at any moment. He could, as they say, separate like (laughs) nobody could separate because he was such an explosive, great route runner that that he just he toyed with anybody who who tried to cover him, whether it was double or triple coverage. He separated from Mm -hmm. it. And Mac Jones could trust on every read that that if he were the first read, he was just going to get open. Right. So to me, that if if I take Mac Jones out of that and pull him out and try to put him in my eye test vacuum, he doesn't live up to the other four in in just pure ability or strength in the pocket or even pocket poise. Sometimes he'd get a little jittery. Right. And I thought he could man- maneuver pretty well. And I thought he could escape a little bit and sometimes be a little bit elusive when he was running for a first right. down. But he's not the athlete no. the other four are. No, Skip, in order for him to run, you got to double dare him. These okay. other guys, we saw uh, um, Trevor Lawrence, Skip. They ran him in a national championship game uh, yep. no, against Ohio State, and he ran for over 100 yards. So we know he has legs. We know Justin Fields. We know Trey Lance. Mac Jones, of all the guys, he's the last. He's going to use running as a last result. Even if he escapes the pocket, he's looking to push the ball down the field. But what I love most about him, Skip, if you look at the yards after the catcher's receivers, all that, that has to do with the quarterback. Because there's a difference between a 12-yard completion, you throw the ball, the guy catches and fall down, you hit the guy in stride, he gets a 25-yard gain. Yep. That's a huge difference. You look at his pinpoint accuracy. Seven of his 10, 13 games, Skip, 
He threw for 385 and 70% completion. a mm -hmm. and Florida, Georgia, Ohio State. Are those teams any good? How many uh, uh, first-round picks, second-round picks you think Ohio State, Georgia, Florida, and a and going to have? Well, that's what he did against their defenses. Okay, but I can also argue Alabama just might have been the greatest football team ever assembled in college football. It might have been. <laughs> they, were, they, they were good. they're loaded everywhere mm -hmm. with NFL but talent, like like top level talent. Yes. With with NFL starters, they're all around everywhere. So he got protected, and he had open receivers. Right. And he had Najee Harris, who's going to go probably later in the first round, very likely to Pittsburgh mm -hmm. as the top running back. I kind of favor ETN a little bit just on his explosive speed. But Najee Harris is a stud right. back. He can catch it. He, he's two thirty. And and he could run. He he could make holes. Well, he better not so, let Najee Harris go to uh, Najee Harris go to Tampa Bay. Can you imagine with his ability to run the football and catch the football in Tampa? Man, they're they're loaded. They got playoff Lenny and Rojo let, and Geo. Well, I just hope I, 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 don't I, hope, know. He, I hope he's going up the board before then because I don't want to find so? out. What about my little man Keyshawn Vaughn from Vanderbilt? <laughs> they're they're just loaded. I I don't know where else. I'm not sure Najee can make the team. <laughs> I'm not sure he could make the team, seriously. So the point is, we, now we get to Justin Fields. And, and he's always factored out of these debates right. and conversations. And, and what I love about Trey Lance, and by the way, we're going to have him on later. Okay. I know he's been on a number of shows, but we've got some questions for him. Sure. And I still have some questions. Obviously, he came from small town Minnesota, about 150 miles west of Minneapolis. Right. University of Minnesota said no to him as a quarterback, which just drives me out of his mind, and it drives him mm -hmm. to be great. Great. And he goes to North Dakota State just to have the chance mm -hmm. to play quarterback, and they redshirted him as a freshman. Right. And he turned into a film junkie, and he is as dedicated to the process of playing football, playing quarterback at the high, highest level as any college kid I've ever heard of before, mm -hmm. where he is obsessed with it the way a Brady or Peyton were or have been obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. So I love his intangibles along with the measurables are off the charts. We're talking about 6'4", 225, runs 4'5", will run over people. He won't be able to do that in the NFL consistently. Not alone. But, but he's... He is a runner by nature. He, he's got natural running ability, and yet he's got the big arm. He's got a quick lightning release. And remember, they let him run the offense from under center the way Peyton mm -hmm. Brady often do, where you set your own protection, mm -hmm. you read it. You, he, he's going second and third options. Mm -hmm. He's audibling. And he, they, they gave him the whole offense on the field. They let him be the coordinator on the field. Mm -hmm. Well, I can argue that in football IQ, he's ahead of the other kids right now, even ahead of Trevor Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And yet I don't have a body of work and I don't have competition. Right. He's the flip side of Mac Jones. I don't have, I got right. FCS competition. Right. Skip, but you heard some of the uh, general managers, you heard Jerry says, if it's close, I'm going to go with the guy that played as opposed to the guy that opted out. And you heard, you, you're starting to hear yeah. groundswell of that. So how close is it? between Matt Jones, Trey Lance, and Justin Fields? And do other general managers that are in that spot that's going to be selected, do they feel like Pittsburgh GM? Do they feel like Jerry Jones? Because Jerry says a guy that opted out, he missed 700 snaps. He's okay. like, well, so okay, I, but, but Trey Lance didn't opt out of, of his own uh, will. You know, they, they just didn't play. Right. So he played one game last year against Central Arkansas. What do you do with that? Do and, I, and it Skip, you know, you keep saying he threw, you know, 28 touchdowns with zero interceptions. Zero interceptions. And, but Mac Jones was 41-4. and four. Mm -hmm. That ain't bad, Skip. 41 touchdowns with four picks and playing against the level of competition that he's playing against night in and night, night out. And I understand, Skip, you have to have, you look, he had, there's no denying. He's going to have, he's at some point in time in his career, he threw the four first-round receivers. Yep. He, he did do that. He had three. He's going to have three or four first-round offensive linemen yep. going to the you know, last two drafts. But okay, Remember, what's Mel Kuyper say about Trey Lance? As fascinating and difficult an evaluation yes. as I've ever encountered in all my years doing this. Well, I agree. Yes. So I, I get right to the finish line on Trey Lance, but if you throw back at me, what's his body of work? Right. I got 16 games in 2019. Right. I got 16, and they're great games they're great. against who? Against, I don't know. Right. At but least he won the national championship without throwing a single interception. 
he, he, he talks about how his priority on the football field is do not turn the football over. How many young quarterbacks have that in their head as their priority? Right. None. I, I, Skip, it's just that when I look at it, you look at, you can make the same argument for Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow had, didn't have a whole lot of game. I mean, you look at it the, 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 the year before, Skip, he was bad. Yep. Joe Burrow was bad. Okay, but what did your eye test tell you when you watched him on TV versus Mac Jones? He just looked better than me. He's a little bigger. He plays stronger in the pocket. He's more athletic. He's got a little bigger arm than this kid did. Remember, this kid, a lot of times, not a lot, but, but a few times, he would just underthrow balls to Devontae, and it just didn't matter because Devontae was so open deep. You know what I love most about Mac Jones? Even though he knew Jalen Hurts, even though he knew Tua was coming to Alabama, he says, I'm going to compete. Okay. Well, I'm going to it. compete. All right. Skip, how many times and you see guys that normally you look at the Alabama guys, the running backs, you know there's three other five-star recruits going there. You look at the receivers, you already know they got three five-star recruits and two more coming in. You go there and compete. He says, you know what? He could have left. He could have easily left Skip. Okay. He said, no, I'm going to wait my time. Okay, so are you going to dock Justin Fields for nope. not being able to beat out Jake Fromm? No, nah, nah. Because he, he tried and failed for whatever reason. It wasn't his call. It was the coaching staff. Right. It was Kirby Smart right. and company calling I, I want to hear what Kirby Smart has to say about Justin Fields. We keep asking Ryan Day, but Kirby Smart did coach this young man for a year. He did have him in his system for a year. And nobody has said what Kirby Smart, I know what Ryan Day has said. Ryan Day said he's been a pleasure to coach. You can throw all you want to throw at him and he'll be able to handle it. He's tough as nails. What is Kirby Smart? Does anybody ask Kirby Smart? Can we get Kirby no. Smart on record? What does he think about Justin Fields? Skip, they were just top two guys in the country for the longest of time, and they're about 35, 40 miles apart from each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One's born in yeah. uh, Kennesaw, Harrison, yeah. went to Harrison County. The other went to Cartersville. So and now all of a sudden it seems like the gap is the, the, the length of the Nile River between Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields to hear people talk about it. I'm like, well, yeah. damn, how did he get so exponentially better in three years? And yet, I love Justin Fields' mental and physical toughness. And to me, he can get hotter than any of these five quarterbacks, but he can also throw in stinkers that knock you back right. in your seat and give you cause to pause. Right. Because you say, wait a second, after I watched him against Northwestern, I was just about to be out on him right. because he stunk the whole game against Northwestern well, Skip, in the Big Ten Championship. And remember, Skip, they got racked by COVID also. Ohio State got yeah. racked by COVID. And I don't think, it, I don't think it, it happened to Fields, but a lot of his teammates, some of the offensive linemen, some of the other uh, position players got, got hit by that. So we don't know how, how much that factored in to maybe him struggling against some of these teams that he struggled against. Okay, but obviously he bounced right back yes. from the Big Ten Championship game. And he and lit up Clemson like nobody's ever lit up Clemson, correct. right? Yes. Brent Venables, he, he doesn't give up six touchdown passes right. in a game. And that Except, happened. Yeah, the, uh, Brent Venables' last two big games, they weren't very good against LSU and against Ohio State. They weren't very good, Skip. So I, I just think the thing is what happened with, with Kyle, with the 49ers, Skip. Yep. They talk themselves like, okay, well, you know what, Skip? We, we, we kind of know where we want to go. Let's just go take one last look at this car and see what it looks like. And then when you get there, you're like, damn. Hmm. It's better than I thought. Okay. I don't know. So are you there also? Uh, Skip, I've already told you what. I, I believe the guy, the system, the way he ran it, the way Kyle ran this offense with the two other guys, Mac Jones is it. The question is how much, how expansive does he want to get? If you hear him, uh, uh, he says he, uh, when he evaluates a quarterback and they would ask him about RG3 and they would ask him about a lot of other things, he was explaining it to you, explaining it to a lot of people. He said, if you do this, I'll do that. If you do that, I'll do this. The question is, do I have a guy that can, can, can decipher, you know, process information at yep. the speed of light and get the ball out of his hand and can he be accurate? If he can do those things, I can put him in the right position. He can, all that other stuff is okay. second nature to him. So I'm on record. If I'm the Jets, I'm taking Justin Fields because I think he's <laughs> readier to play than, than Trey Lance is. I, I don't get Zach Wilson either. I'm not saying he's going to be a bust, right. but he's got a little Johnny Manziel going on, not off the field, on the field, right. where it, it's a lot of sis boom ba, It's a lot of whipped cream. It, it's against lower level competition. Right. And it's, it's sensational. It's got some YouTube sensation going to it. But I don't know if he can stand and throw the way, ultimately, that Trey Lance will be able to stand and throw it. Skip, you remember in 99 at the British Open, Jean-Claude Valdivelle, he was about to win. Vandevelt, he, yeah. Skip, yeah. he got a three-shot lead. They get ready to put his name on the... He hit it in the drink.
Okay. And he never. So are you saying the jab? They've already started. Zach. I, I just don't know where that came from. I don't know why they had to engrave their name, the, engrave Zach Wilson, it, on, on a on a on draft card, card yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, a month ago, more six weeks ago. Yeah. I don't get it, but well, apparently that's what happened. Commissioners already got two cards: one okay. from Jacksonville with Trevor Lawrence's name on the other from the, the Jets with Zach Wilson's name okay. on it. So, he already has two cards. So ultimately, I think Justin Fields and certainly. Trey Lance will be better than Zach Wilson. So I would go first because I would take, look, Justin Fields is, is a mentally tough kid who played at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would throw him into the fire with the Jets sooner than I would. Like, Trey Lance is going to need a little time. Right. He's going to need at least, it would help him immensely to be able to stand and watch for one year. Yes. And then his ceiling is going to be much higher. I think it was, it was, it would help immensely if all, if all the guys could, but we know, look, Trevor Lawrence is starting day one. Yep. We believe Zach Wilson will start day one. Yep. And so, you know, we look at Patrick, we look at some of the guys that have success. If we yep. look at it. Look at Tom. Yep. Tom waited for a whole year. Mahomes waited for a whole year. Yep. Rogers waited for three years. So, real quick, to sum this up, you played for a man named Brian Billick I in did. Baltimore, right? Yep. And he has some great quotes today to our man Jarrett Bell at USA Today. And Brian's talking about how many swings and misses there are on the first round on quarterbacks. And he says, in what world is Mitchell Trubisky taken in front of Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson? Well, yeah. I, I don't know what yes. world. We, it's the world we live in. It's the world we're going to live in tonight. So he says it's still 50-50 proposition. Of the five guys taken this year, only three of them are likely two of them will be good. Right. That is a fact. Yes. History is screaming right. that. And remember, this would be just after you were there when they took Kyle Bowler, yep. right? Yep. So Brian Billick himself took Kyle Bowler. a little later. They were 19th uh, the, yeah. first round pick. Mm -hmm. And he, he says of uh, the, the kid I called Kyle, I should have been a bowler. Right. That's what he should have been. Right. Remember, on his knees at his pro day from the 50-yard line, he threw it between the, uh, over the, you know, through oh, the uprights right. he at did. Cal. Yes. Okay. And Billick says of Kyle Bowler, he checked all the boxes, physically, mentally, hard worker, good kid, loved the game. But for whatever reason, that ability to process, you, you always hear quarterbacks when they're successful, at some point they say the game slowed down. Well, nobody has ever been able to process the way Brady and Peyton and Breeze and, right. to a certain extent, Aaron Rodgers right. can just see it and feel it yes. before, before the defense right. can see it. Yes. It, it's the ability to have the mental poise and, and just the gift of, I can go boom, boom, oh, boom. Right. To find the open man right. quickly and deliver a catchable football. Accurate, accurate. correct. Okay. Yes. You see, and Brian asked, in what world would you take Mitchell Trubisky over Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson, what Jerry says when you do something unconventional. <laughs> see, Skip, if it works out, you see, it's kind of like with Patrick Mahomes. When nobody saw this coming with Patrick Mahomes, Skip. When, when, I, when, I didn't. When, when Andy Reid, Skip, he nope. traded from 27 to 10. And you're like, yeah, the guy has tremendous arm talent. Well, you can see the arm talent. There's no denying his and, arm and talent. I, I told you the other day, if you look at his three years that he played at yes. Texas Tech, his completion percentage was in the 50s. Mm -hmm. So you can't tell me he was... Deadly accurate. No, he wasn't. No, he no, wasn't. No, he wasn't. We saw no. the athletic ability. He was a shortstop who could have played big league baseball. Mm -hmm. We knew the arm. Yeah. Oh, it was huge. Yeah. But the rest of it, he was wild, erratic, crazy decision maker. And look at him now. Andy Reid got a skip again. Where did he go? I'm not so sure. Patrick Mahomes is great, but I'm not so sure he would be what he is right now. I agree. In any other system, unless I it was agree. Andy. You got him, Travis. You got him, uh, Kelsey. You got he him, did. Tyreek. You sprinkle on other fast guys, and yep. you let him uh, you take advantage of every asset that he has. Mm -hmm. And this is what you get. But you like Trey Lance. No, you like Justin. I think you like you like. So like you take Justin them. Lance or, or, Tr or Justin Fields or Trey Lance in the third spot? Uh, Trey Lance, but I, if I'm the Jets, I'm taking Justin Fields. That's what I'm saying. But, wow. but Trey fits what the Shannons. I love what they did with RG3, and this would be another level up from RG3 to me. Yeah, he's 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 probably 30 pounds heavier than yeah. RG3, also. Yes. No mercy. Jerry Jones has been infatuated with Kyle Pitts while also being careful to say that they won't be overlooking their needs with the 10th pick. But he also said there is an opportunity for the Cowboys to do something unconventional with the pick. Most mocks have Dallas taking a defensive back. So, Shannon, let's start with you. What should and what will Jerry do tonight? Honestly, what I would do, Skip, real talk, real talk, real talk, real talk. Yep. I would take Michael Parsons. He's oh. Devin White. He's a bigger Devin White. Devin White is six foot, 237, ran 445. 
This kid is six foot three, two forty six, and ran four three nine. Four three nine. You love Pro Football Focus, so I'm gonna I give do. you what Pro Football Focus right. says. He's the highest graded linebacker in the last seven years. Yep. Buckus Award winner. He opted out this he year. Opted out. Now, what's scaring people you, is you've got a one year body of work. Right. Go ahead. What's scaring people is that he has some off the field issues. He has. Yes. So that's scaring a lot of people. But this kid, fourteen tackles for loss, five sacks, over a hundred tackles. Skip. He's sudden. He's in, you, when you, you watch him play, and then you watch him at his pro day, and you say, okay, now I see why he was able to make that play. Now I see how he got from point A to point B so suddenly. And that's what you want. You want a guy's pro day to match what you see on film. Man, he looks sudden. Damn, he looks impactful. He's explosive. Check, check, check. What I believe they'll do, they're going to take a corner. Now, you and I both like Pat Sertan II, mm -hmm. but it seems to me we're hearing a lot of groundswell about J.C. Horn. We are. Because he's a press man-to-man -man corner. Yep. What did he give up? Seven, nine, nine completions mm -hmm. the whole season. Yep. He took Kyle Pitts, kept him in check, four he, catches he, for 43 he did yards. pretty well against right. him. Right. So uh, I don't think you can go wrong because I think they need both. Skip, look. Jalen Smith is a great story, but Jalen Smith ain't this kid Parson. He was before he had that gruesome injury. Yep. He was he was Michael Parsons before he had that gruesome injury. I'll buy that. I don't think Wolf Hunter has the kind of impact, the speed that this kid has. So I would take Parsons. Jerry, Skip, when did Jerry ever care about off-field issues? That would, that, that's one of the things you need to have on your resume to get Jerry's attention. Yep. Jerry like a little bad boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. But for me, he does. I would take Parsons, but I believe they're going corner. Yep. I would take, for me, having seen Pat Sertan the most, knowing his dad, Knowing how fundamentally sound that is, yep. he's as fluid as he checks all the boxes. Health, no off-field issues. I would take Sertan, but what I'm starting to hear is a groundswell for J.C. Horn. They need to go defense. Get the the sugar plum. What do you say? Visions of sugar, sugar plum, plum dancing yep. in his head. Mm -hmm. He needs to get rid of those sugar plums <laughs> and just get something very, very simple. I don't know what's the opposite of sugar plum, yep. but he needs to get something. Get a date. Get a fig, get some raisins, yep. get something that's bland, but that works that you need. Yep. And that's what he needs as a corner or an impactful linebacker. Okay. And so I believe one of those top three defensive players will go to the Cowboys. The Sugar Plum reference was from <laughs> Twas the Night Before Christmas. And last night was the night before Christmas for Jerry Jones. Yes. Because tonight, today and tonight, is Christmas Day for Jerry. Because I don't know, if he's, is he going to be on his yacht again tonight? He probably will be and he will be center of attention. So here's my biggest problem with Jerry Jones. The older he has gotten now as he's going on 80 years of age, the more addicted he has gotten to the spotlight. Yeah. And the more he gets addicted to the spotlight, the more he knows I got to do something crazy. I got to I got to shock the world. I got to and we're going to talk about this a little later, but Kyle Pitt's father said that he just believes and, and surely he's hearing this from his son and representatives of his right. son, mm -hmm. that Jerry's going to shock the world. Well, Jerry already said, I'm not going to trade up for Kyle Pitts because that would, would require an inordinate amount of value to go up. It, it would be trading up for a quarterback to get a receiver. Yeah, right? skip. At the 10 to go to four? Yeah. Oh, you're giving up 2022 20, and 23 first rounders. Okay. So that is, <laughs> I, I hope that doesn't happen as much as you know I love Kyle yeah, Pitts. Yeah, I, I know you want Kyle Pitts. Okay. So I'll say it one more time. If by long shot, billion to one chance <laughs> that Kyle Pitts falls to 10, I would be very happy. For, for Jerry just to say, I'm sorry. I know I got to fix my defense, but he's too good. He's not getting past Miami at six. Okay, I got it. I'm just, <laughs> I just said billion to one. On the billion to one shot that he actually falls to 10th, it's not going what to happen. What about trade 10 to six? Are you willing to grade 10 to no, six? No, I'm not. It just it would cost too much. And the defense is just too pathetically bad. It is pathetic. It was all time. It was arguably the worst defense in the history Hold of my franchise. Skip, how you say in one breath the defense is pathetically bad, okay. historically bad for the Cowboys? Because I told you, you I told you maybe six weeks ago, Kyle Pitts in this draft will be better at his position than any of these quarterbacks will be at playing quarterback. Yes. That's how yes. transcendent he's going to be. Right. He will change somebody's life. We're about to talk about Atlanta's life. We'll talk about that in right. a moment. 
But if, if he just fell in your lap, you would just say, we got to take him. What happened last year? Jerry was on cloud nine because C.D. Lamb, my guy from the University of Oklahoma, and I told you from the start, he's the best receiver in the draft. They had him sixth overall on their board. Right. And he fell, where were they, 17? 17, 17. So, so he, he fell right. out of the way. And, and Jerry was ecstatic because two things happened. He got another playmaker on offense because offense sells. Right. That's box office. And it sold Jerry because it made Jerry the star of the night. I got CD yeah, Lamb, you, you know, and it was it, it was insanity, but I loved it. And, yeah. and again, it was the right pick to make at that point. But now that you have your CD, do I think Kyle Pitts will be better than CD? Yes, I do. Yeah. But CD is pretty good. He, he is good. But here's the thing: you said if, if he fell into your lap, I look at it as Jerry being married. If you married, you can't let another lady sit on your lap. You're like, no, I'm married. So in this situation right here, Skip Bayless, you need a defensive guy. There's a I joke there, but I'm not going to use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, Skip, okay. you know what I'm talking about. You should be married to one of those defensive okay. players. That's what okay. you need, Skip. Okay, I got Your it. Your head hard. You did it last year. Okay, okay, I got it. I do not disagree with you because Jerry said two days ago, it's very possible that we will have the pick of the litter Thank of you. the defensive yes. players. They will have the first defensive player off the board, right. very possibly at number 10. Which is unheard of at number 10. Okay. Think about this. Given the common draft, we've never had a defensive player go this late, I don't think. It's just because four quarterbacks could go, maybe five, right. I don't Correct. know, yes. could go early. And then you got wide receiver tight ends. You, you got lots of wide receiver and tight ends. Linemen. And one, for sure, Panay Sewell. Yes. Okay, so that could push defense all the way to Jerry Jones. So you could sit back at number 10 and say, we can take any defensive player in the entire draft, and it is loaded with defensive talent. Right. Okay, I do not disagree with you that Micah Parsons is the, the, the best overall player. He just is. I told you that the other day. Yeah. Okay, now, now we're starting to nitpick on need. And Jerry's quote two days ago was, don't get stupid on need. Right. Okay, but you this is close to. enough. This is close enough. You definitely need a cornerback. Yes. Patrick Sertan is a blue-blooded stud because his father wasn't just a cornerback. He was a Pro Bowl yeah. cornerback. I played against his dad. His you dad did. was legit. He was legit, and he taught son everything yeah. he knew, and the dad is still a coach. Yes. So he coached his yeah. son, and he taught him well. Right. Patrick Satan is the kind of player who will make 10 Pro Bowls. Seriously. He well could be a perennial Pro yeah. Bowler from maybe t for starting two years from yeah. now on for the next 10 yeah. years. That is money in your bank. Well, the, the thing is, the, the the comparison, Skip, you know when guys coming out, they do a comparison. They say the comparison to him is Marlon Humphrey. Yeah. Marlon Humphrey is a two-time Pro Bowl. He's an all-pro player with the Baltimore Ravens. He's solid. Okay. And that's Pat Sertan. Okay, you but yet Todd Archer, who covers for ESPN, covers the Cowboys, he's got them taking J.C. Horn. And to your point, there's been a ground they swell have been. about J.C. Horn. Right. Well, his father played. He didn't play cornerback. Yeah. He played receiver. Right. You played against I, him. I played against Joe. Joe Horn. Yep. And Mike McCarthy coached Joe Horn as the offensive coordinator at the Saints. Saints. And the new Who's also a Pro Bowl player. Okay, also a Pro Bowl player. And now we got a new coordinator in Dallas, Dan Quinn, who's very close to Will Muschamp, who is the coach at South Carolina. Right. And I'm sure he's getting all the inside stuff right. on uh, J.C. Horn, who... You know, I, I saw a quote on NFL.com this morning for an anonymous quote from an evaluator who said he could be special. So look at the measurables on J.C. Horn. 6'1", 205, he ran 4'3", 9 at his pro day. Right. Michael Parsons ran 4'3", 9. So, so as and a line, I know. Okay, I got it. <laughs> but he also bench pressed 19 times the, the J.C. Horn. That's, that's pretty that's good, good for, for a quarterback. That's very good, yeah. Okay, the, the times I watched him, he plays with a T.O. kind of rage. Mm -hmm. He is a man-to-man -man travel corner. He wants your best guy. Right. Wherever he goes, right. I'm going to go get right. him, and I'm going to fight him right. to the death. And there's a lot of hand fighting. There's some clutching. Yeah. There's some grabbing. He's not great as a ball hawk. Yeah, yeah. He but, but, man, he will just fight you as a man-to-man, -man, lockdown, shutdown type corner. Okay, now let's look at Patrick Sertan's measurables. 6'2", 208, so he's an inch taller, but about the same right, size, weight. Mm -hmm. weight. But he ran 4'4", four, 6", four, which is not bad, but it's not 4'3", 9", right. okay? So I got it. This J.C. Horn might be slightly more athletic, if mm -hmm. you want, or whatever that thing is. He might be a little more special athlete. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he can play cornerback the way Patrick Sertan can just lock you up, textbook lock you up. He can play zone. He can do anything you want to do. And you want to talk about ball hawk? who can leap, and at the the, the height of the right. ball, he can go up and snatch it. I don't think anybody's had to go up against the level of competition, even in practice, 
that Pat Sertan. Oh, my God. I mean, you think about it. There was no easy. If you yeah. go to the slot, you got to deal with Jerry Judy. You got to deal with Devontae Smith. You go outside, you got Henry Ruggs, and you got Jalen Waddle. Yep. So where do you get a break? And then you also had to deal with uh, uh, Justin Jefferson. You had uh, you Jamar did. Chase. You got you Marshall. Did. So he got no off days. No, he got no off days. And trust me, <laughs> he will run support. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he is a textbook wrap-up tackler yeah. on the run. Where He'll just take him on. I know Dion always took the knock of right. Dion would tackle when he needed to tackle. He's making business decisions. Okay? Business decisions. <laughs> but J.C. Horn makes all business decisions because well, he's not going to support the run. Now, like Skip, in, in this defense, yep. you got to support the run. If you look at Sherm, you look at Brown, and you look at the guys that play in that, did, that, that, that single house safety defense, I, I agree. you got to support the run. And Pat Sertan, you play with Skip. You know you play with Alabama. you got to support the run. You That's just one have thing. to. They won't let you play. Yeah, yeah. There's one thing their corners will do. Their corners okay. will tackle. I, I'm going to remind everybody, Patrick Sertan the second started 38 straight games for Nick Saban. Yes. And Nick Saban coaches the DBs. Yes. It's, it's money in the bank. Yeah. It, it's, it's what Jerry Jones doesn't like to do because it's a safe, solid <coughs> me. Pro Bowl pick. Yes. It's, it's not what... No splash. There's no splash right. to it at all except you got a stud and he's the flip side bookend of Trevon Diggs because Trevon Diggs is going to clue and gamble and, and risk it. It's right. high risk, high reward. He's going to get beat. The other guy's not going to get beat. Now, if, if Pastor Tan had the bravado of Dion, had the chains, had the persona. He, Jerry, 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 Jerry would get it. He would love it. Jerry he would get it. But that's not, that's not his he, MO. He's not a he's, big He talker. seems to be like no. a quiet kid. Yes. He doesn't he, trash talk. Yeah. He just plays. That's what Devontae told me. He said, now, Trayvon Diggs is more the trash oh, talker. Definitely. He said, now, Pat Sertan is really, really quiet. You know, he's not going to say a whole lot. He's just going to go out there and do his job. And so, Jerry, Skip, like you said, Jerry's a showman. Jerry want guys to talk. That's why he loved Michael. What was Michael doing? Talking all the time. He liked time. The time didn't really talk on the field. Time saved that for in the he front did. of the persona in front he, of the camera. He did. So okay. So to your point, Michael Parsons has some risk because of off field. JC Horn has some risk because of on the field. field. And so give me safe, sound, solid. I, I'll just take Patrick Stan. I've been telling you that for like six weeks. Just give me Patrick Sertan, and I will be quietly happy. I'm not going to pound the desk over it, no. but I'm going to have a real football player at that corner. No, let me go tell you what's going to happen. You'll be happy <laughs> when they get him. And then you see Kyle Pitts have like two or three, oh. three, a thousand yard season, and you say, Jerry, we should have got it. We should have strengthened the strength. No, not if you have to trade two first rounders for him. Skip, yeah. what, hold on, what is that uh, worth, though, Skip? Jerry if he's going to he give you, you know, thousand, ten touchdowns, over the next three seasons. You just can't do it. Jerry loves a little We're good risk enough involved. there. Oh, you're good enough? We're good enough Jerry, to win right? Super Bowls with what we have. Oh, and that all matters oh, if, Super Bowls. if Pitts is still available. So let's talk about <laughs> this, guys, moving on to Atlanta, because the Falcons sit with the fourth overall pick and could be the first team to draft a non-quarterback. Kyle Pitts, he's widely regarded as the best player after any quarterback, as we've been talking about, and he should be available for Atlanta. But there are reports that the Falcons could be interested in drafting the heir apparent to Matt Ryan. So, Shannon, should the Falcons take a quarterback or Kyle Pitts? Yep, this is tough. It's a tough So, one. I agree. Do we take Matt Ryan's replacement, who could be the local kid in Justin Fields? Could be. Do we I'm take, pretty sure he's going to be there. Do we take Kyle Pitts, who we believe is a transcendent tight end? Yep. Or do we trade out of that and accumulate more picks? You will have offers. Yes, mm -hmm. you absolutely. That is a very tough decision. Now, it seems to me with when they restructured Matt Ryan's contract, it made the next two years of them getting off him virtually impossible, Skip. I don't know if you're going to do a $40 million cap hit. Now, hey. We just saw uh, Philly get off of, uh, of Carson Wentz, and we saw the Rams, and they take 20 plus $30 million cap here. So yep. to say they, they can't do it, because the cap is going to go up, Skip. The cap is 189 this year. In three years, the cap's going to be a quarter of a bill. Let's just call it what it is, because the new money kicks in. And so you know what they got, so that's where the cap's headed. So it'll make it a more, a, a more digestible. <sighs> Julio Jones is the unknown, Skip. You hear their fielding calls for Julio because of that. You know, if they move on, it saves them $15.3 million. I'm looking at it like this. See, I'm going to take your philosophy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I'm Atlanta, I keep Matt Ryan. Yep. I keep Julio Cavarilli, and I take Pitts, and I don't look back. I say, okay. I, will get, right. I will get into a scoring match okay. with all you. I know my defense is suspect, but I feel I can score a lot. Because you have to understand, Skip, Arthur Smith loved the two tight ends. Remember, he had John New Smith and a Ferska. Mm -hmm. Yep. So... 
I love Kyle Pitts. I think he's too good of a talent to pass up. I really do, Skip. And I don't, there's not, they need defense, but I don't think there's a defensive player where Parsons, if, without the off field issues, probably would be worthy of going in the fourth spot because I believe he's that good. Yep. What I think they'll do, I believe they take Kyle Pitts. I don't know. I don't believe they'll take a quarterback. I would, <laughs> the quick, because Skip, $40 million cap hit next summer mm-hmm. if you move on from Matt Ryan. Uh, no. I'm, they taking Pitts. I say they take Pitts, pair with Julio Ridley, and they try to form what they have in Kansas City. Okay. I do not disagree with your final takeaway from this. I don't hate the idea of them going forward with Matt Ryan because even though, if you look at what's happened over the last four years, as you correctly predicted because you had inside information <laughs> in 2016, he was the MVP. You did have inside information. <laughs> And he led the NFL in QBR that year. He did. And his coordinator was Kyle Shanahan. Yes. And so maybe that's why, to some degree, that happened. And then Kyle Shanahan was gone to San Francisco. And you look at the QBRs for Matt Ryan over the last four years. He was fifth, ninth, 14th, and 16th. Well, 16th isn't all bad, but you can see there's some decline there's going some on. There's some slippage. He is about to be 36 years of age. Tom Brady is going on 44 years of age. Mm -hmm. So, so again, he's so much younger than Brady, it's hard for me to say give up on Matt Ryan because I don't think it's quite time. And And you look at his numbers, Skip. The dude got 55,000 yards passing. And maybe I got prisoner of the momented. It was week 15. It was the third to last game. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching my guy Brady play at Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And what did Matt Ryan do to the Tampa defense in the first half of that game? He threw for 235 and two touchdowns and no picks in the first half. Right. And they led 17 to 0 at halftime. Mm-hmm. Of course, Brady came back in the second half and threw for 320 in the second half against a pass defense that was the fifth worst of all time. All time. Yeah. The first worst of last year, but the <laughs> fifth worst all time. Yes. Now I got two of those guys on my team, and they're going to be my starting safety it, linebacker, it, right? Good luck. Good luck is correct. <laughs> okay, so I saw Matt Ryan do that to a really good Tampa defense. Maybe it hadn't quite crystallized yet right. for them. They hadn't mm-hmm. quite taken off as they did finally at Washington and New Orleans and then at Lambeau. But it was highly impressive, and it was so impressive that I said, that, that guy's still really good. Yeah, he is. He is okay? good. Kyle Pitts is transcendent. You just can't not take him. Right. You will forever regret it. Mm-hmm. Now we get to the Julio dilemma, which is, you know they've already shopped him because they already admitted. They admitted. Uh, yeah. Terry Fontenot said, "Yeah, we're accepting calls. We're, 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 accepting, we're, yeah, we're okay. listening to calls. We got- okay, so they know what's on the board. Is it possible? Because I wouldn't doubt this that somebody has offered them a first round pick to swap play. You know, like- hell, if I'm the Ravens, I give up one of the first round okay. picks I got for him. Well, would you? Hell yeah. They're at uh, 27, 20, 20, and 20, 27 and 31. 27 and 31. Okay, yeah. 27 and 31. Yeah. Would you give number 27 for yeah. Julio? Hell yeah. You know what? I would too." Okay, so if you're Atlanta, we're talking about strengthening his strength. You know, I would still love their firepower if they kept Julio. But, man, if you could get another, you, you could pick whatever is, the, the defense is the, the side of the ball. It's loaded in the right, draft. Right, So you could get a really good player. You could get an instant starter with the 27th overall pick on your defense, right? Could I tra- The question is, could I, how far could I trade back and still get a top-flight defensive player? Trade back from four? From four. Oh, and not take Kyle Pitts. Right. I just don't love that. I, I just don't think it's worth it because you'll forever regret that you didn't take Kyle Pitts. So, in other words, you're saying, I don't like the idea of trading Julio because I still think Julio got great football left in him. So, I wouldn't trade Julio. I agree with you. I would keep Julio pairing with Ridley and Kyle Pitts. And, okay, Matt Ryan, let's see what we can do here. We're gonna have, you know we're going to have to outscore people. Okay. You know that. Arthur Smith, you understand that. Arthur Smith like to run the football, too. But, Skip, I don't really know if they got the running back to kind of run this. He don't have a Derrick Henry. I'm sorry. Doesn't have Derrick Henry. So, you're going to have to, you know, generate uh, uh, moving the football through passing it with your quarterback. Okay. So, Julio is 32 years of age. Yes. He's starting to be a little gimpier where he's got hamstring issues. Yes. Is he going to be slowly but surely a little worse, a little slower, a little more injury prone over the next three years? Because he's under contract for three more. Yeah, Skip, he might be a situation. You know who a guy guy had uh, a hamstring problem was Isaac Bruce. And basically you got to limit his workload in practice and just hope he's ready to go come game time because you don't want him, Skip, 
you're not supposed to be as big as Julio and run that fast and generate that kind of force. So you're going to have hamstring issues. But there, I don't envy the spot that they're in because here's the thing, Skip. If you don't take a quarterback and one of these guys that you passed on turned out to be great, yeah. they're going to say, see, what the hell was Atlanta thinking? If you pass on Kyle Pitts, he turned out to be great. Damn, what the hell were you thinking? You trade Julio and he strings together two or three more great years, what the hell were you thinking? The two toughest decisions are coming back to back. The 49ers and the I Falcons agree. have the two toughest decisions in this draft, Skip. And it could be incredibly good. Or it could be incredibly bad because it all is going to depend on how well Arthur Smith's uh, uh, coaching yep. career, head coaching career, starts out. Because right. you make the right decision. Right. Right. I, I remind you, they still have Calvin Ridley, who had a huge year. Yes. He, he had almost 1,400 yards receiving last year. I ain't taking Ridley over Julio. Right. I like no, Calvin Ridley, too. No, but I'm saying he's there. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, still, yeah, yeah. You yeah. fall back on that. And Russell Gage, is, he's pretty yes. good. Yes. And Hayden Hurst can have his big game moments, right? <sighs> Ooh-wee. Okay, so that's what you're looking at. You could keep Julio, but is he going to be more and more of an injury issue for you going forward? You owe against the cap 23.1, then 19.3, and 19.3 the next year. Yeah, think about that. He missed seven games. Even with the amount of games, Julio's probably missed the equivalent of a season and a half. And nobody through the first 10 years have caught more yards than Julio except Jerry. So just think about where he's been. The guy got 850, over 12,000 yards. Nobody in the history of the game has done that except Jerry. Yeah. Is he still that guy? He's still that, he's still that dog. He's still that he's I told still you the other dog. day, I, I think he has more left in his tank than A.J. Oh, yeah, Green there ain't does. no question about that for and, me. And yet I liked what the Cardinals did to acquire A.J. Green just to see what he's got left. Right. And he'll have a sort of Brady-esque rejuvenation. Well, but I mean, he, uh, the thing is, now nah, he's not the number one. They got D-Hop on one yep. side. They got Christian Kirk that they can take the top off down the middle of the field. So so now he gets, you know, now he's going to get the second corner, the third corner. But who... I don't envy. See, I like being a coach when everything's already made for me, Skip. I don't like to have to make these decisions. You know, the more I think about it, what you <laughs> said, strengthen your strength. Take Kyle Pitts, keep Julio, yes. hope that he stays somewhat injury-free, mm -hmm. And now you have an explosive offense. Oh, yeah. And, and you would hope that Kyle Pitts would re-inspire Julio to, to take it up a level. Because because here's the thing, Skip. Okay, Breeze is gone out of this division. Yep. We don't know what Carolina's going to do. I just I don't know if you read John McClain's. He said like, there's still eight nine teams that are interested in Deshaun Watson. They, you know, they, they, if you notice, Skip, everything has gone out of the media. So they've gone behind closed doors. They're huddling yep. up. The question is how much time is commissioner going to sit on his docket? Because we know he's going to have to go sit it down for a minute, Skip. Yes. We know that. You would think so. You no, I ain't no thinking yeah, that. We okay. know that. Yep. So the question is, now, what's the pri asking price? Somebody's going to get a very good quarterback. You got that right. So in that division, Brady, let's just say for the sake of argument, we say he plays two more years, this year and next year. Then Brady's gone. There's no Drew Brees. Atlanta could be sitting real good. Okay. Unless, unless Carolina get, get Deshaun. Yep. No mercy. Well, the latest report is that the Patriots are still interested in getting back Jimmy Garoppolo after trading him to the 49ers four years ago. Patriots insider Tom Kieran wrote yesterday that it's not a matter of if Jimmy G gets dealt back to the Patriots, it's a matter of when. He's normally on this stuff, guys. Uh, <laughs> Shannon, after tonight, is Jimmy G a 49er or a Patriot? Well, Skip, you're hearing that they're trying to work out contract, you know, lower his cap number and things of that nature. But for me... Jimmy would be a great bridge, a great for one of these quarterbacks. We know they're going to select a quarterback to learn up under four year and then turn the reins over to him. Or do you trust C.J. Beathard to be that guy, Nick Mullins to be that guy? I think if Kyle thought they were going to be the guy, he wouldn't have moved from 12 to 3. Now, it's been reported also that the Patriots are interested in moving maybe from 15 to 4. Now, if Kyle Shanahan gave up two first-rounders and a third to move from 12 to 3, what the hell do you think it's going to cost Belichick to move to 15 to 4? It's going to cost him at least that, maybe a second, Skip. That, 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 that would fly in the very face of everything that we know about Coach Belichick. And that's to take Justin Fields. Justin Fields. Okay. But also, Skip, him spending $170 million in free agency flies in the face of everything that we know about Coach Belichick. So considering that he had the type of year that all bets are off. Skip, I'm not used to not making the playoffs. Yep. I'm not used to not going to Super Bowls. I'm not used to being the topic of conversation when yep. it comes to the playoffs. So I'm going to have to do things up. 
that word again, Skip, unconventional. So Coach Belichick might do something out of desperation, but I just don't see it. And considering that the draft class next year, they say, well, Spencer Rattler, the kid out of uh, Sam Howell, the kid out of North Carolina, you got five guys. They got Spencer first. Spencer Rattler's University of Oklahoma. University of Oklahoma. And, and Sam he's got a live arm. Trust me. Coach Belichick said, I can't wait till next year. Coach Belichick said, I kind of need to get something done right now because people like Skip Bayless talking crazy about me, talking about I can't coach. Like I'm talking, I'm talking truth about him. <laughs> talking about yeah, Tom Brady get 85% of the credit. Correct. That everybody knows I deserve 60, at least 60% mm. of the credit. So I believe, I'm going to say, you know what, Skip? I'm it's, it's going to be hard for Jimmy G to go back, go back to San Francisco, Skip. After everything Kyle said, Kyle said, I can't promise you we're going to be alive on Sunday. <laughs> I'll true. say he gone, Skip. He gone, he yeah. gone, he gone. He gone. He gone. He's gone. <sighs> okay. I believe that the great Bill Belichick is right now sitting on the hottest seat in the draft because he, he got called out by his owner. Yeah, he did. He basically said, we have to draft better because they do have to draft yeah. better. Because Robert Kraft has learned many years ago, you, you don't fix it via free agency. No. You build it through the draft. That's a short-term fix. Yes. That's not sustainable. Okay. So he let him open the, the team checkbook <laughs> and just throw money all over the place. And he overpaid here, there, and everywhere. But you said, well, you just have to. You got to. If you're trying to fix the problem, plug right. the leaks, you, and you go first in free agency. They went first, first, first everywhere they went. Yeah, Skip, Skip, if, if your toilet's overflowed and you got a <laughs> leak in your house, you call somebody, you say, I'm charging $200 an hour. Okay, okay you're going to pay it. You done made the mistakes he made drafted. you go going to overpay about a year ago, when you're going to the CVS for Purell, and it says it costs like $12 a bottle, yes. or whatever, you just say, okay, oh, I got to have yeah. it. Yes. Okay, I got it. So <laughs> Belichick was desperate for Purell. He was. And now he's desperate for a quarterback. So Todd McShay's latest mock has Mac Jones, your guy, falling to 15, and would he take Mac Jones? I am not sure about that. It, it makes sense that he would be the fifth quarterback who was ranked high who would fall in your lap. Right. But you love Mac Jones. Do you think Bill Belichick loves Mac Jones enough to take him if he falls to 15? I do. Do you? I do. I, I didn't think Mac Jones would be there. But, yes, I think he would. if he fell to him, absolutely. With the connection with Coach, Coach Saban and knowing the way Coach Saban is a chip off Coach Belichick's old block, he was a defensive coordinator. In Cleveland. So, Skip, you know how they... they that could work both ways. Saban could be whispering to Belichick, well, I just don't know if he's talented enough to, to lift a whole pro franchise up. Skip, I mean, he's taking too many Alabama guys for him not to shy away. Now, you look at his running back, his linebackers, he takes it. He loves Alabama guys. Okay. He knows they're well coached. You got to be well coached and you got to be smart to play. Okay. Got to be disciplined. The new USA Today draft today has Mac Jones falling to 19 to the Washington football team. That, to me, is likelier. Right. So back to Tom Curran, and it's inevitable. So what do the Patriots take at 15? A lot under the best player available. Oh, so know. you said if they get Jimmy G, they won't yeah, need to take? that's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm about to get okay. to Jimmy G okay. because okay. I agree it feels inevitable mm -hmm. to me. It feels like fair is fair and that Belichick – He'll need to see how the top of the draft falls, right. but but that he's sitting on the 46th overall pick, mid second round. Right. Wouldn't that be a fair price yeah. for Jimmy G? Because they got him for yeah. two, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and again, he gave away Jimmy G. Jimmy G had earned the right to have a first round tag on him. Well, you Skip, know? this is a situation, Skip. I don't think either one of these couples wanted to part. Yep. And we went out. We tried different things, and guess what? We back together. Okay. That, 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 Coach Belichick didn't want to part with Jimmy. I don't believe Jimmy wanted to go. Jimmy wanted to start, and he knew he couldn't start there. Coach Belichick didn't want him to go, but Coach, Mr. Kraft said, you got to get him up out of here. So guess what, Skip? Three years later, yeah. they're going to get, they get married. Hey, it's on a silver platter <laughs> for Belichick to tell the NFL, watch me now. I got him. And, and it's not like Jimmy got old, you know, and Jimmy had his moments. You do realize that the uh, New England Patriots got a quarterback in Cam. So what Cam's supposed to be doing all this? Okay, so that begs the question. <laughs> Is Jimmy G a little better than Cam Newton right here, right now? I, I'm going to go slightly. Okay. I'm just going to go slightly because Cam is beat up. and he, I, I, Jimmy I, is beat up. Yeah, I, know, I know he couldn't, he couldn't yeah. stay healthy. But Cam's beat up like 
physically and mentally. He's just taking a <laughs> lot of pounding. And again, they really struggled on offense last year. And I don't want to keep dredging up all the bad cam numbers, but he had, he had a rough year. Oh, he had COVID. He did have COVID for a while. And I will give you that. Yeah, and all the odd that. So all those guys come back, that defense is going to be right. Okay. But Bill Belichick didn't draft Cam Newton. <laughs> and, <laughs> no. and he didn't make him the MVP of the league in 2015. He, he needed him as a stopgap. And right. he was a really good stopgap. And to your point, and, and I'm, I honor what Cam did last year, because that, that was a bad football team, especially on offense. He had virtually nobody to throw to of any ilk. You know, there, there was nobody where you could trust, oh, he'll get open. No, right. you couldn't trust any of them because, as Brady said the year before, we can't separate. Right. They, right. they were worst in the league in separation both two years ago and last year. Think about it. Julian Edelman retired. He retired. That was the guy Cam okay. was trying to throw to. Right. And the wide receiver that they took in the first round two years ago, Skip, he, 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 he can't get open against you and I. Hey, <laughs> and and yet Cam had like a Wizard of Oz night at Seattle. It yeah. was the, like the second Sunday second night game, game yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It was like somewhere over the rainbow. Right. I don't know where that came from, but that was spectacular. Right. He had another one against Buffalo. He did and should have won the game, and they couldn't quite close the deal. Right. He, had, he had the glitch at the end of the, right. the game. So he had his moments. But look, this is the guy Bill Belichick handpicked in the second round to succeed Tom Brady, right? He did. Right? He did do and, that. And he had it all lined up. It was it was all ready to go in 2017 until Mr. Kraft said no. No. And Tommy, as you say, went to daddy, and you know the rest of the story. Right. And I still think that was the right move right. because, obviously, they went on to win right. two more Super Bowls and play in three more. Yep. Okay? And they should have won the other one if not for Belichick giving up. 41 points to Nick Foles. Right. But that's a whole nother issue. But so, Coach, Coach Belichick said, but see, Mr. Kraft, yeah, we, we, yeah, I'm granted, but now look at us. Okay. We had so, to spend 180 million of your dollars. Would, would Jimmy G redo his contract to some extent? Would he take a little less money? I don't know about that, but he's, he's going to, he's scheduled to make 25 million. But to me, this is Belichick saying, I, I'm back in business. This is where mm -hmm. I wanted to be. What it'd be up to about five years ago, right? And now I'm back on track. And again, what's the Bible say? Pride goeth before the fall. Mm -hmm. And I think your pride is going to to do you in here. I don't think Jimmy G is the answer. I don't think he can play perform any better than Cam performed last year. Right. I I think he will struggle. I think he's one of those guys with a lot of talent who doesn't process all that quickly, and he's an interception waiting to happen. And, that, and that's the thing that's going to drive Coach Belichick crazy. I got it. Is the turnovers. Can okay. we turn it over? Yep, but Belichick will say, I'll fix that. Okay. Okay, remember what happened when Jimmy G first got to San Francisco? He's texting him after yeah, his Yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, how you doing, Jimmy? Yeah. yeah, way to go, Jimmy. He brought, Skip, <laughs> we don't know. He might have uh, uh, texted Tom Brady on the Super Bowl. Congratulating He him. did not. How you know, Skip? Yeah, he might have texted him, you sorry, you know what? <laughs> Right? You know, no, Skip. He hey, had the, he Tom, had, Tom Brady has put him in a bad spot. He has a, Coach Belichick has a special relationship with Jimmy G. It's okay. He does. Like, 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 like Tom has a special relationship probably with B.A. now. Okay. I mean, you can't yeah. hold that against Coach Belichick, can you? Yeah, B.A. went along for a great ride. <laughs> there you right? go. There those great, no great ride. He did. <laughs> and by the way, Tom Bay is Back in the driver's seat. Coach Belichick, yeah. Coach Belichick got something for him. And, and, and remember, look look what Belichick knows he's up against. What do you think he did yesterday when he saw that they had just re-signed Antonio Brown? They got everybody back. I want you, three you cases. You don't think the pressure just ratchets up? I want three up? cases. Huh? I want On three what? cases. Tampa Bay, uh, uh, New England, that's what. Oh, that game? Yes. Okay, I I'll want three it. cases right I now. I thought we already had like four on that. Well, okay, make it four then. Okay, four <laughs> Make it five. Make it, I like a nice odd number five. Okay, well, you owe me like 32. That's okay. okay. Now I owe you 27. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I got it. I take that bet. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a game at Foxborough in the middle of the year. You right? know Coach Belichick don't lose at home. Right. Okay, well, <gasps> that, that used to be the case when he had Tom Brady. You know when Coach Belichick get his guys, he got his guys. Yep. Yep. Okay, here we go. It might be Jimmy G versus Tommy. Ooh. Tommy's homecoming. And then Coach Belichick says, see? Try to tell y'all. Five yep. cases on that one yep. already? And not even knowing the quarterback situation? I don't care. That's confidence. I, got, I trust Coach Belichick. Maybe oh. it'll be Stiddy. No, nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> Bet off if it's Stiddy. I don't, I don't think nah, we're going to Nah, nah. I ain't getting no Stiddy now. A lot after tonight. That's just a Hell for Jimmy G. No mercy. 
so glad it's here. We're just hours away from one of the most anticipated NFL drafts in years. Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson are expected to go one and two, but then it's the third pick with the 49ers that is currently anyone's guess. Latest reports are that the organization has been split on Mac Jones and Trey Lance. And meanwhile, mock drafts and reports have teams like the Falcons, Broncos, and Patriots all making moves to take a quarterback in the first round. NFL Network draft analyst Bucky Brooks is joining us again today. Bucky, today is the day. So here's the question. If we assume that Lawrence and Wilson are going one, two, where do the next three quarterbacks go? Again, it's anybody's guess, but we're trying to sort it out. So let's <laughs> go with the San Francisco 49ers at three. Trey Lance is going to be the pick. Trey Lance, when you go back and you study what Kyle Shanahan has said, recently he talked about wanting a quarterback that could throw it like Drew Brees, but run like Lamar Jackson. Now, I would contend that maybe Justin Fields is maybe more of that, but Trey Lance gives them something that they definitely need. They need playmaking ability at that position. He can take it from under center. He can do shotgun stuff, quarterback design runs, and also do the things that Kyle Shanahan wants. I think he is the pick for the 49ers. That leaves us with the New England Patriots because I don't believe the Falcons are going to take a quarterback. Kyle Pitts appears to be the pick there. And the Denver Broncos making the trade for Teddy Bridgewater. Unless there's a special guy that falls to them that they deem to be a next-level quarterback, I think they're going to take a defensive player. So that leaves the Patriots. The Patriots, in my mind, would love to have Justin Fields. Justin Fields to pair with Cam Newton. Cam Newton and Justin Fields have a history going back to when Cam Newton coached Justin Fields as a 707 quarterback. I just think that works. It also allows the Patriots to, to use a new age offense as they go into the 2020s. I think that works. And then the Washington football team with Mac Jones. Remember, the Washington football team has a number of Alabama players. They believe in that Alabama, uh, what Alabama produces. They believe in the, the players that come out of that culture. I just think that is a nice fit having Mac Jones as the new leader of their team with so many of his former teammates already in the fold. So no, you, you're saying that the Patriots, but they're going to have to move. I don't believe they can get, if they want Justin Fields, I don't believe they can stay where they are and get Justin Fields. So do they come up to seven, with make a trade with Detroit? Do they come up to eight? I believe if Justin Fields is there at nine, the Denver Broncos are taking Justin Fields at nine. Uh, see, you know, that, here's the tricky thing with that. I can, I can see it being a really good pick for the Denver Broncos. I think he would fit that system. But, man, do you want to have so many young quarterbacks in that room? Now, George Payton, the new general manager, comes over. So this would be his opportunity to put his stamp on the organization mm -hmm. if he did take Justin Fields. A lot of it depends on who wins that debate in the room. Is it Big Fangio, the coach who's seemingly on the hot seat, who wants to win now, and a defender would probably give him a chance of winning more games this year as opposed to waiting for a quarterback to mature? Or is it George Payton saying, Hey, I understand what you want, Coach Fangio, but this is a long-term investment. Let's get the quarterback now that gives us a chance to compete with the Justin Herberts, the Patrick Mahomes, and maybe even the Derek Carrs of the world. It's, it, look, it's a debate that one of these guys has to win the thing, so we wonder, will it be the general manager or will it be the head coach? So you like Parsons at nine or you like a corner at nine? I think for Vic Fangio, I think the linebacker is going to be intriguing. I think Michael Parsons is a guy, look, for whatever reason, we can talk about the character and whatever things happen off the field. On the field, he is a baller. He is a difference maker and an impact player. And if you're going to take a linebacker in the top 10, you need someone who can get after the quarterback. He had six sacks the last time we saw it. But when you watch him blitz, he's one of the best blitzes that I've seen in a long time. And for the Denver Broncos, I just think Vic Fangio would have so much fun having an impact playmaker on the second level like Parsons. He reminds me of bigger Devin White. You look at Devin White, when he yeah. coming out of LSU, yeah. how sudden and impactful he was. You watch him. I'm not saying he's going to be – Devin White's unbelievable. I think Devin White's the second-best middle linebacker in football right now. That's me personally. But it might be number one, yeah. B-Wag, no disrespect, Bubba, but Devin White's coming. Would you look at Michael Parsons, six foot three, two forty six, with that kind of speed, that kind of athleticism, pair him with Von Miller and uh, uh, Chubb? That makes a lot of sense, and it makes a lot of sense in that division because you got to stop people. And I think when people are talking about linebacks and you don't want to draft them high, they're underestimating the value of a Michael Parsons because you brought up Devin White. Devin White last year had nine and a half sacks from a linebacker position. Michael Parsons can bring that kind of impact and value. I think it's a huge position. Man, he can hit, run, and cover. 
impact player on that defense with Von Miller and Bradley Chubb certainly gets them up to playing at a high level in that division. Okay, so let's go back to the top. Obviously, Trevor Lawrence goes to Jacksonville, but here, Bucky, <laughs> I've said all along, what are the Jets doing? Why did it have to be Zach Wilson for the last six weeks? Why wouldn't this be Justin Fields at number two? Because I think we all agree Justin Fields is a little better to me than Zach Wilson. I've seen more of him against better competition. He's mentally and physically tough. He's readier to play to me than Trey Lance is. I love Trey Lance. The upside is off the charts. It's the, the biggest. But Trey Lance would be a great fit with the Shanahan's at three. And mm -hmm. I've told you that for a couple of weeks now. Mm -hmm. So now it's come to fruition. But, Bucky, tell me why Justin Fields wouldn't go two to the Jets. You know, man, this is simply a case of uh, going to the ice cream shop and you prefer a different flavor. Some people like Rocky Rose. Some people like mint chip. And for whatever yeah. reason, the Jets are stuck on the mint chip right now with Zach Wilson. Because when I look at Justin Fields over Zach Wilson, bigger, faster, stronger, I would say that Zach Wilson is a more natural thrower. But the competition stuff does play into it. Both guys have an opportunity to be really great quarterbacks. You know, and it comes down to style. Which style quarterback do you prefer in that version of the Shanahan system? Right now, it appears that the Jets have settled in on Zach Wilson. They believe Zach Wilson may give them some of that Aaron Rodgers-like playmaking ability that they covet. And so he could be the picket, too, even though I would contend Justin Fields can give you that and maybe even more yep. as an athlete because you're talking about a bigger, faster, stronger kid at the position. Okay, so if, in fact, then my guy Trey Lance goes three to the Shanahan's and Kyle Pitts goes four to Atlanta – to me, somebody is going to go up to five, six range to get Justin Fields. But you, you're you saying that Justin Fields would fall to Belichick at 15, right? Well, I'm saying that you may have to go up to get him because at five, the Cincinnati Bengals typically and traditionally never trade out. So they're probably going to take a player. <laughs> That's Mike Brownski. Uh, it may be Penny Sewell. It may be a wide receiver, Jamar Chase. Yeah. The Miami Dolphins can take any of the remaining picks. I think when you're sitting at six, you don't want to give that up, man, because you have an opportunity to take Chase, Pitts, or Panay Sewell, whoever falls to them, so they're there. So now the natural landing point would be the Detroit Lions at seven. People would talk about taking a wide receiver, but this rebuild for them might be so massive that they can get a wide receiver later. They don't have to take one at seven. I think you have to get in front of the Carolina Panthers yep. because even though the Carolina Panthers have Sam Donald, they're not necessarily locked to Tampa. No. They haven't given him the fifth-year option. And if there's a quarterback, Justin Fields, that's sitting there, man, Matt Rue can say, hey, Sam Donald versus Justin Fields, which one is the better guy? Look, let's take them both and figure out and figure it out in training camp. So seven is a sweet spot. That's where you have to make the move to get the next quarterback after whoever's taking the number three in San Francisco. Okay, so Shannon loves Mac Jones. I, I'm not sold, and, and apparently you're not that sold because you have him being the one quarterback who's going to fall all the way from potentially third overall to, what, 19th overall to Washington. Yeah, I mean, like here, here's the thing with Mac Jones. <clears throat> Mac Jones is an outstanding point guard distributor. I think I heard you guys yesterday talk about Steve Nash yep. getting the ball out and kind of distributing in the rock. That's what Mac Jones does, and there's a lot of value for a quarterback that can do that. Now, the reason why we talked about Mac Jones as a top five pick, a lot of it has been trying to connect the dots with the Shanahan and Mac Jones because we've seen Kyle Shanahan play with some quarterbacks and have success. But let's take that off the table. What other team is going to cover that at a high level when you may have more explosive athletes that can give you more? Bigger arm, more athleticism, more impro improvisational playmaking ability. Mac Jones is a guy that, Look, he can win, and he can win at a high level, but it puts more pressure on you to make sure that the supporting cast supports him and gives him the opportunity to do what he does best, which is really be a pass-first point guard. He can do it, and he can win. I just think, man, if I'm getting a top-10 player, I want special. I don't know if he's special. I think he's very good. I don't see special when I watch him on tape. So you don't see Mac Jones, if, if he goes to Washington, making a Pro Bowl? I, I mean, I don't. I think you can make a Pro Bowl as a byproduct of your team winning. I think he can do that. 
I don't think that we're going to celebrate Mac Jones like we celebrate some of the other talents at the position. The way that we rave and ooh and ah over uh, Russell Wilson or Pat Mahomes or even Deshaun Watson, he won't do it like that. He will have to be what I call an acquired taste where he is so efficient and effective that we celebrate him like we celebrated Tom Brady and those guys. And I know that has been kind of the comparison that people link to him. But remember, it took Tom Brady time to get that because of the win and how they were able to do it in New England. If he wins at a high level, we'll treat him like that. But I don't think it'll be just on the salary alone. the law. You believe, so in other words, you're saying you believe that Mac Jones is the least likely to be, get off script and be great. You believe these other guys can get off script with, when the play blows up, I ain't got nothing that, but that play ain't working, to get off script and make something happen. You believe Mac Jones is the least likely to do that because the really good guys, as you mentioned, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson, uh, Lamar Jackson, uh, Josh Allen, all these guys can get off script and make spectacular. Kyler Murray, so you don't believe that Mac Jones has that, and that's what makes these guys special. Yeah, I think, I think that's the difference, you know, because when we go back and we think about the statuesque quarterback, and I'm not doing that to be disrespectful to Mac Jones or anybody who plays the game like that. The only statuesque quarterbacks that we've seen of late that have had success are Tom Brady and then the recently retired Drew Brees. It is just really, really hard to play in today's game without a high level of athleticism. And that doesn't mean that you're a runner, but your ability to maneuver around the pocket against these superheroes that are coming off the yep. edge. Because remember, Matt Jones is now having to deal with the Von Millers, the Khalil Max, the Aaron Donalds, all of these guys coming off the edge that make you move in the pocket. And I would say that Matt Jones is closer to the Matt Ryan and the Jerry Goss of the world than anyone else. And mm -hmm. we have seen how challenging it can be for both of those players when everything isn't right around them. From the play caller to the supporting cast, everything has to be right. So your margin for error is smaller when you have a Mac Jones. That said, you can win and win at a high level, but you just don't have as much wiggle room when it comes to play calling and assembling your team. Mm. Okay, back to the top. I had issues with Trevor Lawrence talking about he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder and he's not driven, according to his high school coach, to win Super Bowls. He could walk away tomorrow. Do you have any intangible issues with those quotes? Look, I think the quotes come off bad, but because I know the kid, because I've seen and been around the kid since he was 17 at Elite 11 and watching him, I know he's a competitor. And I think here's the thing that we have to understand about Trevor Lawrence. A lot of us in our lifetime. We've been the underdog, right? We have had to overcome long odds to get to where we wanted to get to, whether as players or even in this chair. Trevor Lawrence has always been celebrated as QB1. And so he's been the Yankee. He's always been the favorite. And so it's hard for him to manufacture a chip when you've always been on the pedestal. I think the fact that he has lived up to the height speaks to his competitiveness and his character and what he wants to be. I just think it's hard for a lot of us who've always had to be viewed as the underdog to understand somebody saying, no, I don't have to manufacture a chip. I chase excellence because I want to be an excellent player. I want to be one of the greatest, not because of everybody doubting me or people saying that I can't do it. I've always been expected to do it, and I've done it. That's what drives me. I'm intrinsically motivated, not externally motivated. And real quick, what, what, what did you see from Trevor at the quarterback camps as you saw him as a younger player? You know, here's the thing, right? So, so Chip, it's not only Trevor. Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence have always been 1A and 1B. Mm -hmm. In Elite 11, that year that we had them, Justin Fields was the MVP. Mm -hmm. I would say with both of those guys, very competitive, understand the moment. They love the big stage. And that is the thing that we talk about when we talk about competition. How many games have you played on the biggest stage? Because those college football playoff games are about as close to the NFL as these guys will get to experiencing. What do those guys look like on the stage? And so Trevor Lawrence has dazzled on that stage. But I would also say Justin Fields has dazzled on that stage. And I don't think Justin Fields has gotten enough credit for the excellence that he has displayed as a collegian. Because in two games that I watched, Justin Fields play against Trevor Lawrence, you can make the argument that he outplayed him in both of those games. And so both of those guys deserve their flowers. 
I think Trevor Lawrence is certainly an outstanding prospect, but I'll put Justin Fields right there with him. But it's just hard. I mean, you play this game. You know how motivated you have to be. Even, I mean, like take a guy like Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning's dad played in the NFL. But you look at Peyton, he's driven. It was the most important thing. It's the end-all, be-all. Football, I'm not saying you got to be married to it, but it's got to be a mistress. It's gotta be, you got to be dating it or something, though. For his dad to say that, his high school coach to say that, his fiance, now his wife to say football is not everything. Yes, it is. At that position, it's life or death. And all the greats, forget sports. You talk to any great, from Elon Musk to Jeff Bezos to Warren Buffett to, to Bill, anybody. Find what you're passionate about and go all in. And I just, look, I, I know what he says. There's a reason why he started this fire. Now he's trying to put it out. He said it. Ain't nobody asking him. He said it. His, mom, his dad said it. His coach said it. His wife now said it. She said it, Bucky. I don't know how. Do we get around no. that? No, no, no. He, he said it, but I would say this. In interviewing people around him, talking to his brother, talking to his coach, talking to Dabble, all these guys say, look, he's a guy who is a very grounded and well-balanced guy. Football is very important to him. He chases it like nobody else chases it when it comes to greatness. In fact, he wears 16 because that was Peyton Manning's number at Tennessee, and that is who he's always idolized. So that part is in him. But I think when you're talking about a kid who is deeply devout, I think he has a different perspective when it comes to greatness. He wants to be great in that area, but he also wants to be great in the other areas. I think when you talk to Peyton, when you talk to Dabo, when I talked to Dabo a few weeks ago, Dabo said, look, man, this guy's like Steph Curry. He's super talented, and it's as pure as you're going to see in terms of his throwing emotion and all that other stuff. He's a come early, stay late guy. But what he's not going to do is he's not going to bring a lot of fanfare and attention on himself. So even though he may have put those quotes out there for public consumption, I think this is a guy who has a fire that burns hot. And I think we will see that when he gets to Jacksonville. Because remember, Urban Meyer came out of retirement, specifically to coach Trevor Lawrence. And the one thing that we know about Urban Meyer, he's the ultimate competitor, and the quarterback is an extension of him. I think the reason they're linked is because he believes that competitiveness is in Trevor Lawrence, and I believe it's there too. That's so true. Bucky, right, Bucky. great stuff. Great stuff. It's so good to have your take always. Enjoy tonight. We're going to have so much more to talk about after it all goes down. No mercy. Trey Lance has been winning Skip over and really winning all of us over ahead of the draft. And the North Dakota State quarterback is joining us now with Old Spice, who is proudly partnering with Big Brother Big Sisters of America to help draft the next generation of mentors. Trey, I am so happy to have you joining us today. Welcome. And first, before we get into the draft, tell us a little bit more about this partnership. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, and I'm super excited and really proud to be part of the Old Spice now. Uh, they're, they're, and like you said, their they're partnership with Big Brother, Big Sister, uh, putting a spotlight on mentorship. I, I mean, it means so much to me just because I know I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in today uh, without the mentors of my life. You know, whether it was Carson Wentz, Easton State, uh, coaches, teammates, or just people in the communities I grew up in. Uh, so their commitment to empowering the youth and, and helping them build confidence uh, – has, has meant a lot to me. That's why I'm so proud. And, and obviously, you can, you can visit BigDraft21.com to learn a little bit more about it. Mm. So, Trey, there is now, as you probably know, a groundswell of speculation that you will go third to the 49ers. Are you or your representatives hearing that is the case? Uh, no, I still really haven't heard anything at this point. Uh, I wish I could tell you that I knew something and I wasn't allowed to tell you, uh, but I, I really don't know yet. Uh, so hopefully the next, obviously... You know, 12 hours, I find out a little bit more. Would you like to go to the 49ers at number three? I would like to go to, to any uh, organization that wants me. I'm just looking for an opportunity and a chance to get my foot in the door. The reports were that you, uh, John Beck, who was a former who uh, played quarterback under the Shanahan's in, in Washington, put you through some drills, gave you some of the terminology. So when you had your second pro day, when, the, when Kyle and John Lynch came down to look at you, Kyle Shanahan, the head coach of the 49ers, John Lynch, the general managers. Do you feel comfortable? How comfortable did you feel in this offense? Because I played a lot of years in this offense, and I know what the quarterback can do with your athleticism, your skill set, how special you can be in this offense. Yeah, I mean, I'm more familiar with it, uh, you know, from a, I guess, fan standpoint, honestly, than, than from a, you know, all 22 cut-up standpoint. Uh, but I've learned, obviously, a lot about football um, and, and obviously what Coach Shanahan has done with, with 
the offenses in the last few years um, over the last six, seven months for me. So I've learned a ton about it, obviously, uh, and, a, and a ton about, you know, other offenses. And yeah, like you mentioned, uh, John Beck has been an awesome resource for me, learned a ton from him. And obviously he's, he's done it and played the position at the highest level. Uh, so he's a, a great resource and mentor for me as well. Who do you, who would you say Trey Lance game most resemble in the current NFL? Who do you, do you, you model your game, model your game after anyone? Yeah, I try not to put myself in, in the box of one guy because, you know, any guy I'm going to say at this point has has kind of earned respect and uh, and done what they need to do and, and earn respect in the league. Um, and, and that's something that obviously I want to do is establish myself uh, at, at some point in the league. Um, I watch a ton of football, obviously a ton of quarterback play. So, you know, Russell Wilson, Dak, um, Deshaun, those are three guys. Obviously, Carson is another one. Uh, but we'll watch a ton of guys. Um, and I kind of leave it to you guys to, to kind of put me in that box, whatever you guys want to say as far as comparisons go. Mm. So, Trey, what I love the most about you is your chip on your shoulder. You obviously grew up in the small town of Marshall, Minnesota, a town about 15,000, maybe 150 or so miles west of Minneapolis. And I know you grew up wanting to play quarterback for the University of Minnesota. You went to a recruiting function in February, I think it was 2017. And w what happened? Why didn't they want you to play quarterback at Minnesota? Uh, so, yeah, that was right after the, the coaching change at the University of Minnesota. Um, and, and they were really honest with me. And, and I tell everyone that I'm super thankful just that they were honest and upfront about um, uh, me not – they're not seeing me as a fit uh, to play quarterback at the University of Minnesota. Um, they wanted me, obviously, to play a different position. Uh, for me, you know, I knew I was a quarterback at that point, so it's it kind of a thank you but no thank you situation. Uh, but like I said, we're, we're just thankful for the, the honesty uh, and, the, and the bluntness of the conversation. And how driven are you because of that? Yeah, it was uh, definitely, like I said, a chip on my shoulder. And I think that's one thing that's special about North Dakota State is it's, it's a school and a team full of guys uh, that had the same situation. You know, teams that they grew up, you know, their dream schools didn't want them. Uh, so I think that's one thing that is unique about North Dakota State for sure. Trey, this draft process that you're going through right now, what teams try to do? They pick you apart and tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't be drafted, where you're going to be drafted. What is one of the biggest misconceptions that you've heard about Trey Lance? Um, you know, not necessarily a misconception because I, I had played 20, 17 games from 20 years old, things like that. Uh, but for me, those are things that I can't control. Uh, so, so I don't really worry about them and, and those concerns that people have. Uh, for me, this whole draft, draft process and, and meetings and everything like that has just been about showing people and showing teams exactly who I am and what I'm about. Um, that's the most important thing to me. I, I want teams to know exactly, you know, what they're getting when they draft me. Mm. Are you the best quarterback in this draft? Yeah, I believe so, uh, and I'm sure that every single other quarterback in this draft will tell you the same thing. Uh, but I also know that this draft class is really special, uh, and I hope for the best for all those guys. And obviously, I've gotten to know some of them uh, through the last six, seven months. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think this draft class, you know, not only a quarterback, but but overall, is going to be really, really special. And where did your your drive to to become a film junkie start because I've, I've read that even in your redshirt freshman year at North Dakota State, you were studying and breaking down NFL game tape. Has, has that been with you since high school? Yeah, I think uh, my dad kind of instilled that in me. Yeah. Uh, he's the same way, just a film junkie as far as uh, you know anything goes. Uh, and for me, it was just wanting to learn as much as I possibly could, as much about football, you know, as I possibly could. So I definitely did that, I think, over my time at North Dakota State and even going back, you know, a few years before that. Uh, but, yeah, I think my dad was the one that instilled it in me, and, and it's one thing that I'm definitely thankful for now. And, and, by the way, your dad played cornerback in the Canadian Football League, and then he played for the London Monarchs in the World League. So he was a big football influence on you, I, I guess, early on, right? Yeah, absolutely. He taught me, shoot, everything I know about just being a competitor, Hmm. Trey, you've only th thrown 318 passes. You, you mentioned you started 17 games. Trey Lance ready to start, step in from day one and start. What have teams told you? Uh, are, you ex are you prepared to sit for a year, or do you want to start right away, or are you going to leave it up to the team, or just going in there and say, look, I'm going to just do what I do, and we're going to let the chip fall where they may? Yeah, exactly what, what you said. You already know. Um, I mean, I'm going to go first things first, learn as much as I possibly can. Um, earn respect from you know everyone in the organization, my teammates, treat people the right way and do things the right way. Um, and at that point, you know, like, like I said, I'm going to be ready to go, whether it's week one or week five or whatever it is. Um, and I understand there's different situations that, that I could be put into tonight. And uh, I'm just looking forward to it. Like I said, getting my foot in the door uh, and having an opportunity to, to be a part of a great organization. 
So, Trey, you obviously ran for a lot of yards for North Dakota State, and you ran over a lot of little cornerbacks who happened to get in your way before the goal line. How much of that do you think you'll be able to do in the National Football League? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll definitely have to be smart about uh, picking and choosing my battles. There have obviously been, mm-hmm. been plenty of coaching staff that have mentioned that. Um, I think my biggest thing is obviously understanding situations, and I think I did a good job of that in college as far as, you know, when to lower my shoulder, when not to. Um, obviously, if it's a first and ten situation, it's, it's a lot different than a third and one, fourth and one situation. Um, if it's third and one, fourth and one, I, I probably am going to tell you I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to go get that first down for my team. Uh, but I, I definitely understand the situation and, and the, the longevity at the quarterback position. If I draft Trey Lance, what exactly am I getting? Uh, you're getting a competitor, uh, someone who, who's going to come in and learn uh, and, and treat people the right way. Uh, just excited, like I said, just to have an opportunity uh, to, to be in this league and kind of live out my dreams and, and also understanding that uh, this is kind of just the beginning. This is just the start of the first chapter, uh, the next chapter for me. Uh, but like I say, yeah, a competitor, I'm going to come in and compete regardless of the situation and, and embrace my role, whatever it is, uh, for as long as, as that is, whether it's you know one week or 12. Um, learn as much as I possibly can and, and get around my teammates and get to know as many people as I possibly can. Good luck, bro. Good luck. Yes, sir. All right, Thank Minnesota's you. very own Trey Lance. You know I'm rooting for you, Trey. Uh, and don't forget, you can learn how to help the more than 30,000 youth waiting to be matched with a big at bigdraft21.com. Trey, good luck. Enjoy this. We are excited to see what's next for you. No mercy. In two days, don't miss the return of former heavyweight champ Andy Reid takes on rugged veteran Chris Ariola. It all goes down Saturday, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on foxsports.com forward slash PPV and watch on any screen. The Athletic ranked their greatest number one overall draft picks in NFL history. Peyton Manning took the top spot thanks to his two Super Bowls and five league MVPs. John Elway was second, also in part to his two Super Bowls that he ended his career on. So, Shannon, this should be interesting for you. Who was the greatest number one pick of all time, Peyton or Elway? <laughs> yeah, Shannon. Man, you? why I get all of you put on the hot seat? Why I can't be the people that didn't play for the team that I played for or have a relationship? Why I can't be that? Yeah. Because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know I love my guy Selva, but it had to be Peyton. It, it had to be Peyton? Oh, it had to be Peyton. Wait a second. Oh. John Elway threw you into the Hall of Fame and, and you're taking the I, other guy? And I appreciate it. I rode his coattail. I showed it. I showed it. I appreciate that too, John. Good looking at you, boy. <laughs> But Skip, I don't know how we get past those five MVPs. And you, th- it's like a, it's like Michael Jordan and LeBron. He has five, but he could have easily won another one because you believe his first year in Denver, he should have been the MVP. I'll buy that. Yeah. Skip with five MVPs, uh, four Super Bowl appearances, two at two different spots. He's the first quarter, first quarterback. Pay, uh, Tom has since done it to win Super Bowls in two different locations. And when he retired, he had all the records. He had the most touchdowns, most passes, most 300 yard games. He had the most comeback wins and. His record against against Pey, uh, Tom Brady in the playoff skip is pretty good. So anybody can have a uh, – and when it matters the most, he won the last three playoff games against uh, against Tom. Um, so for me, it had to be him. But I tried to guess, and I thought it would be Peyton John, and I was like, okay, is it going to be Terry Bradshaw? Is it going to be O.J. Simpson? Is it going to be Troy Aikman? I was trying to guess, but I was all over the place. I thought the, the first two – I thought the first two would be no-brainers, but I, w- I was surprised that Bruce – they put Bruce Smith – who I also played against at the, at, in the, at the three spot. So yep. I don't have any problems. Peyton with five MVPs, Skip, I don't know if we're going to see a guy win that many regular mm-hmm. season MVPs. But he has a Super Bowl MVP. And like I said, when he retired, he had all the statistical records. So I went Peyton one, Elway two. Mm. John Elway, I got your back. <laughs> Somebody on this show had to have the back of seven from heaven. Yeah. He was from heaven. You came a little later in his career. No, I, got, and, I, got, I got some good comebacks. But, but, but you, hey, listen, John Elway was it to me. Yeah. It, it was between Elway and Marino for who had the biggest arm in the history of the league. <laughs> and it's real close. I, I once had this discussion with Troy Aikman back when he was playing for the Cowboys. And, and he leaned slightly to Marino, which surprised me a little bit because I thought Elway had the the arm that would split the webbing and on your fingers. Marino's release was a little quicker. Yep. But I don't know if he had a, as strong as a, a arm as John because John was a right fielder. So you obviously, you, you know, you play in there. John could throw it. John could probably throw the ball, I'm saying, probably 70, somewhere between 70, 75 yards. 
and people forget his first maybe three years in the league, he could run with the yeah, football because yeah. he was a big, strong stud right. athlete. Yes, he was. Right? Yes, he was. And yes. all around, as you say, high pick in baseball. Right. Could have been a star, I think, for the Yankees. Right. So here's my problem with Peyton Manning. We discount what happened at Indianapolis, but if you really look hard at it, he had one Super Bowl run and got to beat Rex Grossman in the rain <laughs> in Miami, the immortal Rex Grossman. That's how he broke through and finally won his first Super Bowl. Well, if you take away that one run, he was five and ten in in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Well, so and he won, so he winds up nine and ten in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not great because. Seven times he lost his first playoff game. Seven times he lost. Five times he lost at home in the division round as a top two seed. And, and you can just look back at like 99. He was the two seed. He lost at home to the Titans. 05. He was the one seed and lost at home to the Steelers. In 07, he was the two seed and lost at home to the Chargers. That's all before he went to Denver. What a liquored up kicker missed the field goals. Okay. Remember that liquored right. up kicker? I, I remember when he did <laughs> dismiss the liquored up kicker. And then remember against Drew Brees in the Super Bowl, not to nitpick, but we have to pick some nits here mm -hmm. to make this work. But remember what happened. Tracy Porter happened. Yeah. A 74-yard pick six happened with 3-12 left in the game. Mm -hmm. when, when they're driving, here it is. It's a one-score game. And this is a third and five I know play. it's coming. Whew. There it goes. And yep. there he went. And that, that makes it 31-17. to 17. It was 24-17. to 17, And they're driving to tie the game. And that happened. So I, I got to... I got to hold that somewhat against him. Right. And he wound up two and two in Super Bowls. Now back to your guy, Elway, pre you, mm -hmm. obviously. John got an average Denver team to three Super Bowls, and he got annihilated all three times. And I get that. But when you look at who he lost to, it was Phil Simms and Lawrence Taylor, and they lost 39 to 20. Well, they didn't even belong in the same, on the same turf with those guys, yeah. right? And then they lost then, the next year. Then it's Doug Williams. And Washington, they, they weren't in the same league with those guys. And then it's Joe Montana and the 49ers, and they get wiped out 55 yeah. to 10, not deserving to be in the same universe. With I, that I think team. the thing is, Skip, that those get because those games weren't even close. Yep. I mean, what, 55 10, 39 to what, 20, 39 to 10? I mean, the, the games weren't even close. Okay, but it finally took Terrell Davis with some help from Shannon Sharp. It, it took a different mindset and yes. direction. Yes. It, it took a, a team that became, as you said yesterday, run-oriented. Right. You were a running football yes. team. And John played very well. He did make the Pro Bowls in those those two years you won the Super Bowls. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But he wasn't he was the guy. Mm -hmm. he, he wasn't the reason you got to and won two Super Bowls. Right. So he finally broke through. I thought you were right on pace to win a third straight Super Bowl, which nobody's ever done. And John said, I've hit the wall. Yeah, and I think okay. the thing is, Skip, if you look at it, you look at the number one overall picks, this is what we expect. When you take a guy at quarterback, you expect him to be Elway. You expect mm -hmm. him to be John, I mean, uh, Peyton. You expect him to be Troy Aikman or Terry Bryce. Skip, those are the expectations. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that when you get selected there, it's like, man, that's too much pressure. No, but no. You look at Bruce. Bruce is the all-time sack leader. We don't have O.J. You, you talk about whatever happened off the foot. Yep. Skip, people don't realize how good O.J. Simpson You know how good O.J. Simpson was. I don't think Do people, I? Oh, I, yeah, I don't no think doubt. people, because no. of what transpired off the field, oh, Skip. I, I got it. But he was, oh. arguably, he was the greatest running back. You could make a case. Yes. And so, okay. Troy, and Troy Aikman, three Super Bowls. Okay. Bradshaw got four. All right. Peyton got two. And John got two. Okay, so now back to Peyton in Denver, where you loved him. And, and he was spectacular during regular seasons. 45 but, and 12. But, but the first Super Bowl against Seattle he was pathetic, <laughs> but they were pathetic, they were, and they were just overmatched. Well, skip, you, skip, skip. you can't give up a safety on the first play of the oh, first snap of the yeah. game, snap the ball over his head. And he threw two interceptions in that game, yeah. and they lost 43-8. to eight. Yep. And then the one that he won in Denver against Cam and company, <sighs> he, he throws for 141 yards, did throw a pick, and he was 13 of 23, and you win 24 to 10, but it was a Von Miller game. Yeah. It, it wasn't a Peyton Manning game, so you can argue he went along for the same ride that John got to go along with on his 
final yep. two breakthrough Super Bowls. So, but John won the MVP in his last one. Okay. He threw four right. three, well, he three, did three, against three, Atlanta. Three, Atlanta, yeah. No help from you in that now, game. Man, well, come keep, on, we had you a keep, knee injury. Why you keep bringing up right? old stuff? Why you keep bringing up old stuff? Do you remember your stats? You know every stat. I think I had like two catches for like 19 or something like that. Two for 19? Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Man, I know two for about 30, 20 something. Two for 21, two for 20, 20 something. And you still got in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how. Wait a minute, what about the big plays that helped to get them there? Okay, well, maybe. But I'm just saying, John Elway in the postseason was 14 and 7 overall. Peyton in the postseason was 14 and 13 yeah. overall. So I got to go 7 from heaven. I was 13 and 5. Okay, so? With three Super Bowls. Well, this isn't about you. Oh, my bad, my bad. I oh. thought you wanted me to throw, you know, add a little oh. spice to it. Oh, okay. Well, I can't believe you're going Peyton over Elway because it's not right. Skip, I can't. I mean, what am I supposed to do about those five MVPs? Mm. It's all regular season. I used to say when Peyton was in Indy, he was regular season Peyton. I mean, I mean, I mean, I I mean John won one in 87. I think you made the wrong choice. No, and I, I also think you just lost your parking pass. And no, 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 I huh? call Joe Ellis. Yeah, but well, Joe Ellis Brit works for I John Elway. <laughs> no, 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 you know, no, 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 The no, no, word no, no. just came no, down no. from on high. No more sideline parking passes. I do know the bowlers. I know all the kids. I okay. call Brittany. You, oh, Brittany, you got me, right? Okay. You have a way in? <laughs> I do. So are I know you going to text Elway right now, or should we send him the clip and just make sure he knows about it? You know, you like, might have to answer some questions here. He's going to say, T, you're you right. He probably said you're right. He would not say that. No mercy. Well, last night, during the pregame show of the Lakers' 116-107 to loss to the Wizards, Robert Ory said he wasn't buying the Clippers, despite them sitting in third in the West and six games ahead of the Lakers. But you got to hear for yourself. No! They are pretenders. I love Coach Lou. Playoff That's your guy. Playoff P, I love him as a person, but he hadn't shown up. Hold on. And for everybody to talk about him, and then Kawhi, Kawhi was like space go, space go. He was <laughs> he disappeared titles. in the in the playoffs. So Ty Lue's your bring. Point. I love Ty Lue. I ain't got nothing to do with Ty Lue. He's one of the greatest coaches out there. <laughs> but they are some pretenders, man. <laughs> I love the energy. What? But that's my favorite part. Shannon, are you with Robert Ory on this? Yeah, I remember space go with him hammer at. You do? I do remember Space Help me out. That's way before my time. No, no, you remember Space Ghost. I don't know. You remember Space Ghost with like white suit and black mask. Saturday morning superhero? <laughs> yes. Okay. Had his own show? Yes, yeah, Space Wasn't he like a hero, though? Yeah, he was. Okay, thank you. He disappeared, though. Okay. He disappeared. Skip, look. I agree with Robert Ory. Until they do the skip, we've we, we seen this. Now, you ain't, I ain't heard you mention nothing about Playoff P. Lay, I mean, you was in hybrid Playoff P, Playoff P. You see Playoff P. Oh, all the day he hit a shot, he backed it up in reverse. Oh, he backed all the way to the bench. Oh, just wheeling and dealing. I ain't seen nothing. Mm. I saw a stinker the other day. He had 11 points. Mm -hmm. I saw what he did last night. What's going on, Skip? Mm. You on Rondo. Playoff Rondo. He about to change lives. Mm -hmm. Lost three in the last five. What's going on, Skip? Mm. Uh huh? Uh, what, 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 is it my turn? Where is Kawhi? Well, where I, is he? I told That's you. That's the question. No, I told you what the New Balance. They got his feet on fire. I mm. told you get up out the New Balance. He's hard head of orthopedics. They're for security guards for just standing around. They're for front, front line workers standing around. You can't play no hoop in no New Balance. Mm. I bet he's going to come up out of them, but we got something for you. <laughs> Help is on the way. Somebody coming. Somebody's coming. Mm. Somebody's coming. It's building skip. You wouldn't move it. Are you it, talking about Space Ghost? No, no, no. for the Lakers? No, he coming. It's building. That, that crescendo. Mm. Yeah, that zenith. Yeah. That apex. That yeah. demi -mo Huh. Oh, wait. Are we talking about the same LeBron who was so locked in last night? I see him. He's, he's on his phone on the bench. Can we see that? Is this the same <laughs> guy we're talking about? You always know. No, seriously. Look. Watch this. They're playing. They're actually playing basketball or trying to against Washington. He's on his phone. He He's got have, his phone out on the bench. He might have been hitting me. Is that disrespectful? <laughs> he might Was be he hitting you? <laughs> Were you guys going back and forth? No, no, Were no, you no, saying, no, how no, can no, you no, watch no, this garbage? Yeah, that, that, that was a mess last okay, night. Okay, that was I, some I, mess. I, I, Thank I, I, you. I blame Frank, Frank Wogan's well, substitution. Come on, man. Okay. Back to Robert Ory. He played seven seasons for the Los Angeles <laughs> Lakers, and thanks to Shaq and Kobe, he won three championships oh, well, in, in 2001 oh, oh, and 02. And I will give him this. He was known occasionally, maybe often, as Big Shot Bob or Rob, whichever way you yeah. do it. I like Big Shot Bob. And yet, last night, he shot a big air ball no, right on TV. And mm -hmm. I happen to be watching this live because I watch every Laker game, and that was the Laker 
pregame on the Laker Network. And Allie Clifton, as you saw standing there, she immediately said, uh-oh, Ty Lue is going to be showing his team a clip of this for the rest of the year. And he will. Hey, guess, guess what? He showed them, they showed him some clips last year. And what did it do? Mm. All I know, they had a 3-1 lead. 3-1. Mm-hmm. Yep. Has LeBron ever had a 3-1 lead with the two best players, two best wing defenders? Mm-hmm. And they couldn't stop Murray and Yoke. Yep. Yoke's going to win the MVP. You okay. know that, right? Are you gonna, okay. But anyway, Skip Bay. He's, he's going to win it by default because he, <laughs> he's the only one who's played. He's the only one standing upright right Okay, well, now. when are you going to talk about playoff peak? Okay, Le- LeBron's on vacation. And, and see, there you go. Okay. You know LeBron right. is hurt. So, as Jeff Van Gundy said last night on ESPN during the Clippers game, they have the best roster in the NBA. And I agree with that. But he also said it will all depend on how they react to their moment of truth. Thank and they you. will have a moment Thank of truth you. in the postseason. Thank I don't you. know if it will be against Denver. It might be against the Lakers. It might be against Dallas in the first round. I don't know when. But there will be a moment of truth in which Ty Lu and Rondo are going to have to step up and say, not again. And it will not be again because they are going to win the West. Think about it. Y'all got a guy. Uh, hold on. Rondo is going to be the voice, and you got two All Stars. Mm-hmm. You got two All NBA players, well, and it's going to come down to Rondo. Unfortunately, right now we have only one All Star because Kawhi has a sore foot. And don't give me New Balance because the, the Kawhi New Balance that I wear, they you can play basketball in them because no, they're can't. as comfortable a shoe as I've ever I can't. worn. That's the reason he only went wearing them. Mm. He don't no, want to wear new balance. Try to put one on because if you put one on, you I'm will good. not be able to take it I'm off. Good. I'm good because it fits like a glove on your foot. I mean, the first thing I mean, if I put those shoes on, I'm gonna think I'm gonna get me a hazmat suit and go help on the front line. But I don't need okay. to do that. So here's the only problem I have: Kawhi has a sore foot, and hasn't played for nine of the last ten games. Serge Ibaka has a sore back or a bad back, and he hasn't played for 24 straight <laughs> games. Which brings me to the spark of the team, the heart and soul of the team. Patrick Beverly has not played but two of the last 25 games because he's got a broken hand. I, I got some hey, injury problems. And maybe, maybe I'm going to have a legitimate excuse. If no, you ain't got no play. excuse. Well, if they can't go by the time well, the playoffs mean we, start, we, we don't do that. Well, I'm not we, sure about no, Surge. You hear it undisputed? We don't do excuses. Oh. We don't do that, Skip Bayless. Well, LeBron's just on vacation because he's got no excuse. Skip, Skip, you know the man. Injury hurt. excuse? You, Are you serious? Oh, you're going to talk about Kawhi Leonard have a hurt foot. Now, his resume says that he will sit games out. Yeah. That's what his resume. LeBron has none of that on his resume. Mm. But you want to question LeBron, but you won't question the guy with the orthopedics. LeBron was on an MVP tear, according to you. He and was. he was chasing Kareem's all-time scoring record. Go get it. And then all of a sudden, Jeannie Buss and, and Rob Pelinka you. said, you know what? We got to shut this down because you're in year 18. You have at one point played the most minutes in the league. If we go back to about mid-year, <laughs> the most minutes in the league at age 36, year 18. And they said, nope. We are paying you a lot of money to go on vacation, and that's what happened. I love how, so now all of a sudden, LeBron, listen to everybody else, but when you told me before, LeBron was doing what, LeBron was doing all the hiring, LeBron was doing all this, all the fire, but now yeah. he listening. Yeah, well, who needs LeBron when you have the big penguin, right? Oh, you saw what he did last night, athletic. He, he got out-rebounded by seven by Russell Westbrook. Way to go. Yeah. Congratulations. No, I'm just saying, AD got to get more than four or five rebounds. Yeah, okay. AD you need to give a little more okay. than that. But that was Skip. So, wait a second. All that matters is the Clippers are still leading the league in three-point shooting. They are still leading the league in free-throw shooting, both of which you are pathetic at. We were pathetic team. last night. Okay? We missed six You're in the first always quarter. pathetic at both, free-throws and three-point shooting. For a, the longest time, the Clippers were on pace to become the greatest offensive efficiency team in the history of the league. I don't work They've on. fallen back to number two to, guess who, the Nets. Nothing but Nets. Because the stars are not able to play. They're down three starters as we speak. And if they come back, you, you are in trouble because we know they can defend, but you can't stop this team. What do you mean they can defend? When they start defending? Mm, they've been defending over when? the last couple of months. I mean, KD yeah. them got what they wanted on them. We got Rondo. You don't got Rondo. How that working out for you right yeah. now? Well, I need my players back. He needs people that, that he can actually distribute what about us? to. What about us? Yeah, what we, about you? When we get LeBron back. Yeah. So I, I, you want Rondo or you want Go James? Well, I, uh, Ron, uh, Go James needed Rondo in the postseason because he was your unsung MVP last year. But, uh, with, who hit your biggest shot? Who was the Was MVP? it the King? No, yeah. it was Rondo. Yeah. Every time I looked up, he made another three. What about game five against the Nuggets? Game five? Game five against the Nuggets. Oh, when LeBron remember. James told Chris Haynes, I'm ending this bleep tonight. Oh, uh, really? You remember he said that? How about game two against the Nuggets when you were in dire straits? Do you remember who did? Yeah, I think it Baby was. Go. 
It was your baby goat who yeah. saved you with the. And then again, and against Miami. Game six. You know, baby goat's looking a little sluggish to me. I, I don't know if he's he, going to he, get it back. He's getting his way. He's coming really? back slowly, okay. but surely. Yeah. It's coming back. So, do you still have Dwight? No, you don't. Do you have JaVale? No, you don't. No. You got the big pig. We got Drum. Yeah. He's a nice guy. 17 like and 12. LeBron. He is just too nice. Can I interest you in 17 and 12? <laughs> yeah, and a loss I, uh, to hey, Washington. Think about that. All I need him to do, Skip, he only took 10 shots. Mm. Give me 10 shots with Goat James come back. Give me that stat line. Mm. Is Danny Green still there? Is Avery Bradley? Nope. Nope. Man, you like Dennis Schroeder Danny last Green, night? Danny Green only played good against us. Mm. If you look at when he played when he played the Lakers, that's the only time he did good. Oh, okay. Well, Sixers are doing pretty well, I'd have now, to say. I don't worry about all that. See, see, yeah. you get all caught up in these regular seasons, these meaningless games. Who cares? Like you tell me, who cares about a game in February, March, April? If my team comes back healthy, you are done. We are going to turn you into the space ghost. Okay. Mm. Your yep. day coming. Yep. I want you to have that same. Like you tell me, I want you to have the same energy. Yeah, well, I got it. I want and you to I'm have the same energy. I don't want to hear nothing about no foot. I yeah. want to have, they need to play together. Yeah. I don't want to hear all that because you will come up with a bunch of excuses. He's going to come back with a, a healthy foot, and he's going to put that foot in you. Well, he ain't kicked nobody yeah. with it, so I don't know what's wrong with his feet besides yeah. the yeah. shoes. Things are about to get very interesting <laughs> between you two over there. No mercy. Well, ahead of tonight's draft, consensus number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence responded to criticism he received for saying he didn't need football in an interview with Time. Lawrence said, quote, it's just kind of the way things are now. It's just what can people find to get mad about to criticize if people still want to have an opinion on the way i think and the way i live i don't really care no matter what you say there's always going to be something so shannon uh do you like what he said to time well skip he's trying to put out a fire he started he started it you know he says he might you know hold back on words moving forward say what you mean mean what you say that's what you say it and when people that's very very close to you people are going to assume they're speaking on your behalf that's just the way it works skip when parents speak, the kid, uh, especially in professional sports, they're going to assume that came from the person that plays that sport. That's just the way it is. When your wife says that football is not the end-all, be-all, well, they, you guys have been together for a long time. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I think Ernestine has a good has a good pulse of Skip Bayless. If she were to say, well, you know, undisputed ain't the end-all, be-all, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, Ernestine. What you mean? She would say just the opposite. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But she has a relationship. She's been around you long enough to know. Mm -hmm. Well, I would like to think that his fiance, his wife now, has been around him to know. His dad has been around him longer than anybody else. He knows. His coach coached him longer than Dabo. He knows. So, I, like I said, all I'm saying is, is that when you say what you said, I'm not, I don't have a problem with him not having a chip because things have been pretty cushy for him. Dad is well off. Yep. He's been the number one football player in, uh, in, in, in America for a very, very long time. Since he's in middle school. Yeah. I don't care anything about the chip, yep. but I need that passion. And passion doesn't have to necessarily be a chip. I need football to be the most important thing in one's life. Mm. I'm not saying it's, it's, the, it's everything, because you're going to have to have a life outside of football, Skip. But boy, the grace that I've ever been around and my little self, you know, it was it for me. I mean, I, I, I ate, lived, breathed. Football was it. I want to talk about football. That was it. Watch football. It has to be, or you wouldn't be you. You wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Oh. It's as simple as that. It really is. When you get to this level, the yes. National Football League, it is so supremely competitive that you, you better be all in, as in obsessed, or you won't rise above the rest. There are a lot of guys just as talented as you, not uh, you, Trevor. Now, You're not the most talented guy on now. the field. Yes, because at every step, he has been, as Bucky Brooks uh, um, uh, just said on our show, he, he was QB1, right? Right. And Bucky knows, he knows Dabo, and I get all that. And he, he defended Trevor just a few minutes ago on the show saying, hey, he is super competitive. Dabo will tell you, everybody will tell you, his brother will tell you. And I get all that. But at every step, nobody really challenged him except at their Elite 11 the camp, Justin Fields. Fields. Right down the, the road, won the MVP. Mm -hmm. And then Bucky made the point, what happened in their two head-to-heads in playoffs? Well, Justin outplayed him both times. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did that really bother Trevor that much? I don't think so. So what bothers me about this is, what really sticks in my craw, what, what makes me doubt his intangibles is, now he's, he's trying to undo what he did, as you said. Yeah. But 
it's like he doth protest too much. And the more he talks, the worse it sounds because <laughs> he's coming across as very thin-skinned thin about everything that he said and all right. the criticism right. he took. And and also a little insecure about it. Right. So he talks out of both sides of his mouth because he says that that if, if you want to have an opinion on the way I think and the way I live, I don't really care. But all he's doing is caring right. about it, right? Yes. He's publicly caring. And then, <laughs> and then he drops a hint like, if you don't want a reaction, just don't say anything. Don't talk to anyone in the media. Right. So he's now threatening to, well, I just won't talk to you so you can't criticize what I say. Skip, the media didn't misconstrue his comments. They they, they wrote what that. you said. Right. You could have said, no, I didn't say that. But that's what you said. So how are you going to get upset at the media for writing what you said and then the reaction that it garnered? Because we would like to think that our super, like, football or basketball or whatever the sport is or whatever the occupation is, that if you're great at it, it's the end-all, be-all. I've never seen anybody it not be the end-all, be-all and be great at something. I've never seen that, Skip. Now, I'm not saying that Trevor Lawrence can't change that. I'm not saying that Trevor Lawrence might be the first player that, you know what, I'm going to do just do 9 to 5. I got to be to work. I'm done at 9. I'm done at 5. I'm in at 9, out at 5. He might be the first guy that can do that. I've never seen it. Who did you bring up yesterday, or I brought him up first, and who did you shoot down? Jay Cutler, Cutler. from Vanderbilt University. Yes. Supremely talented. Yes. Big, huge arm. Yes. Would run over linebackers in yes. college. SEC player of the year yes. as a senior at Vanderbilt. What happened? He didn't love the game. He didn't love the game. Not high passion for it. Wasn't all in on what it took, the sacrifices it took to be great at the right. game. Okay. Well, is that this kid? Maybe. Because Maybe. I see the, ta the talent is yeah, supreme. Yeah, ta talent is undeniable. He, he is effortlessly great at what he does. He has a big arm. He doesn't even look like he's trying to throw it hard, and it comes out hot and hard. Right. Okay. I get all that. And he's got athletic ability at six feet, six inches tall. So is he Justin Herbert? A lot of people think he's a little beyond Justin right. Herbert. So he is a generational talent. Right. And in this league, that gets you where nowhere. It gets you in the NFL. Yeah. But, the, yeah. But, but then it's the yeah. Skip, if, read any book that any great has ever written, and the passion exude through the pages as you read it. Mm -hmm. It's the most important thing to them. They would die. It is. And to say that, well, if he don't win a Super what, what the hell are you playing for? If, if the Super Bowl is not the end-all, be-all in a team sport of football, what the hell are you playing for? The money going to come. If, money if you could walk away from it tomorrow, why are you doing it now? Yeah. Right? Man, yeah. I, I don't. Ooh. Hey, like I said, he might he might change it. He might be the first to be able to do what he said he can. He do it. Okay, all right. Those are the words from the guy that we all expect to go number one. No mercy. Jerry Jones has been infatuated by tight end Kyle Pitts, despite him being projected to be drafted several picks ahead of the Cowboys at number ten. So Pitts' father added some speculation ahead of tonight by saying, "What I think Jerry's got something up his sleeve." That's going to shock everyone. Shannon, will Jerry shock the NFL world tonight? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> no. Jerry's going to go more conventional, Skip. He's, like you said, he'll be on his yacht because Jerry's superstitious. And he's like, you know what? I was on my yacht last year and CD failed to me. Mm -hmm. So maybe if I go back on the yacht this year, maybe he is. He would think that way. <laughs> he will. I don't believe it's going to happen. And he'll have to give up too much, as he says, draft capital mm -hmm. to move up to select Kyle Pitts. I believe he gets the top deep, or one of these top defensive players off the board, and he will not select Kyle Pitts. Yet, yeah, Jerry Jones lives to be the <laughs> biggest story on draft night, often to the detriment of his football team. So if Kyle Pitts' father is saying this, he has obviously heard something from his son or from his son's agent that they have some inkling yeah. that Jerry's going to try to do something dramatic to go get Kyle Pitts. Unless he's it just will talking, be dramatic, too. Unless he's just talking about Kyle Pitts falling to 10, that ain't happening. happening. It, ain't. it is not. That's that's your wildest dream, but that's sugar plum dream, right? But exactly. it's not going to happen. Right. So I will be angry if Jerry Jones leverages or mortgages the future to go up to get Kyle Pitts. I'll be happy to have him, but not at a quarterback price. Well, because that's what it's going to take. It's going to take two first rounders and probably a second because that's what the Patriot, the Patriots, that's what the 49ers gave up to give from 12 to 3. Uh, mm. To go to 10 to 4? So you're going to give her two first-rounders. Okay, it costs you two first-rounders. You want that? Mm, Jerry, take the safe way out. <laughs> take the solid when, way okay, out. Okay, when do you know Jerry to be safe? Patrick Sertan. It makes 
all too much sense, which is why he probably will not. If do he that. took Michael Parsons, would you be upset? No, I would not be okay. upset with that. I think he's going to be gone before. All right, as enjoy as the draft. Skip play. Shannon, we have been talking about this forever, <laughs> and tonight is the night, so enjoy it. We're going to have a packed undisputed tomorrow morning. We're back at the same time. Don't worry, more draft coverage right now with the herd. Have a good rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Beauty.